Hello, everybody, and welcome uh, tonight. Brand new guest to the channel, bearded film guy. You may recognize him from uh, the the Shelf Shock Rewind Awards. Made his appearance there. Uh, everybody, say hello to Chris. Chris, thanks for doing this. Dude, thank you so much for having me on. I have to say that I, I loved the rewards, like the award show. It was great. I think I had the nicest looking video of all the guests. I'm just just saying, <laughs> I put some work in there. Not to discredit anybody else, it was pretty good. That's <laughs> no, it's it pretty HD. I, I will stand by that, dude. I was honored. I was sitting by. I was just sitting here, like watching the stream. Like, oh man, I hope, uh, I hope I do a good job. I hope I did a good <laughs> job. And the moment came, and I was like, God, I didn't mess up too bad. Nice. <laughs> I love that you had filmed the video, sent it in, and then hoped that you did a good job, like you didn't already see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't watch my stuff back. I that's the the one thing I refuse to do is watch my stuff back, because then I'll overanalyze and pick things apart right. and just leave it. You know what I mean? So I just don't. Of do course, that. yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's it's a brand new guest to the show. So first, I mean, we got to get get to know Chris and let everybody know. Uh, you you got a YouTube channel? Why don't you share what you do over on your channel with everybody? Yeah, so the channel is the name that you see here. It's Bearded Foam Guy. I'm still trying to, the channel kind of started a couple of years ago as just like, I'll just show off what I buy. Um, and then I kind of learned that I'm not interested too much in doing that. And I didn't think people were too much interested in me just doing that. Uh, so I'm trying to turn it more into uh, a mix of physical media and a mix of discussion. Um, I'm doing right. the Severin Showcase on there where I'm breaking those down. I'm doing... Um, the inside of mine of Coffin Joe box set now. So I'm trying to get more into deep dives and discussing things a little bit further and trying to kind of have that balance of both. You know what I mean? Um, for those that have not watched anything on your channel yet, just to get a taste of your general appreciation for film, what, what's, what's your current favorite label? Is it Severn? Yeah, it kind of goes up and down. So a couple of years ago it was Vinegar Syndrome. And then after my fascination with vinegar syndrome, it became Severin only because um, I started kind of getting exposed to some subgenres that I loved. And I kind of started getting into like sicker shit, basically. <laughs> and then now with like me being so into Severin, now it's like uh, like massacre, like massacre film. Like, like there's just a bunch of labels that I've kind of yep. learned to, to get into now. I mean, it always changes. I just bought my first two indicator titles. So oh, wow. like, yeah, things are constantly changing, but yeah, lately it's, I would say for 2024, it's Severn for sure. Yeah. Interesting. First two indicator yeah. titles. Are, are you sharing yeah. those in pickups tonight? Absolutely. 100%. All right. Well, let, let's get into it. Cause I'm dying to know what those two are, what your first two choices were. All right. So let me grab them here. So I grabbed, uh, so I tend to do this thing where I get into directors and mm -hmm. I tend to like deep dive into I get obsessed typically. So I actually found these on Amazon and I was like, I don't know if it's like the seam up my alley. So I grabbed uh, two Gene Rollin ones. So I got fascination. This just came in and I got night of the hunted. Nice. So, and these were still the limited editions. Uh, I forget what number I got of this, but I got like 3108 of 4,000 fascination. Uh, just heard some amazing things about them. So I figured let me give it a try. And I love this presentation. Yeah. The, the fact that they cram a book in here and it's still beautiful and it, it's not six inches wide. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it is an impressive look when they, when they get them in these smaller cases for indicator. Oh yeah, for sure. Them. And then um, I'm trying to get, I have one on like watch right now on eBay. I'm trying to get that limited box set from radiance of uh, Messiah of evil. Yep. That I missed out on. And I saw the trailer the other day for it through, I think it was like an ad. And I was like, God, Damn it. I need that movie. And I can't just buy the special edition now. I need to seek down right. the out of print box edition. So, <clears throat> you know. Totally get that. Uh, you know how we, it goes. We got a question for you in the chat. Josephine DeMarco says, do you own or have you ever seen any Ralph Bakshi films? I actually don't even know any Ralph Bakshi film. Please educate me because <laughs> I'm like an open book. Like just, just, just introduce me to stuff, please. Ralph Bakshi is uh he's like one of the pioneers of adult animation. He he did okay. a lot of like the psychedelic uh like music focused animation films that came out uh primarily like I guess when the first one was early 70s, I think. Uh yeah, there's probably a couple titles he's did that you'd recognize. Okay. Yeah, never 
Yeah, that's kind of like a an empty spot in my my filmography knowledge right now. Funny enough, uh, you mentioned Vinegar Syndrome. Vinegar Syndrome originally had announced that they had a Ralph Bakshi film that they were going to put out, the old school Coonskin, and uh, something <laughs> happened, and they have not put that out. Uh, no idea what happened with the rights there, but uh, yeah, they, they they still have not released that. Coonskin. Coonskin, yeah. <laughs> uh, after the show, why don't you, why don't you look right. that one up and uh, <laughs> find out what that's yeah. about? I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other pickups? Um, yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. Man, have you ever heard of this show called The Hunger? I have. Because somebody sent me this off of my Amazon wish list. And uh, I, first of all, I did not know that Tony Scott and Ridley Scott did <laughs> um, a, a TV show together. Yep. And then I got it in and I, I pick them up and I'm like, let me look at this. And the first keyword I see is sexy, erotic, and stylish. And then on season two, I see explicit, vicious, and dark. And I'm like, yeah, color me intrigued. So sounds yeah, like season one is my... Tony Scott. Season two is Ridley Scott. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like a combination there. <laughs> um, and then other than that, uh, the only of uh, me and everybody else in the world, every other collector, I got the. Uh, let me see if I can pull these out. I'm gonna call it these. No, I actually did not get those. Oh, I thought that's for sure. That's what you were about to show when you're saying every no. other collector. Nah, man, dude. No, I got Possessor and Green Room from Second. Oh, Night. see, I don't even have those yet. Good job, oh, dude. Oh man, look at me. I have something else that you don't have though. Check this out. Check these out. Look at that. Look at these. Man, that That's looks right. really nice in person. That's VIP treatment, man. <laughs> VIP. Yeah, I have one. I think they're I have the other compendium. It's coming tomorrow. So it'll be four, five, six. Yeah. Coming tomorrow. But dude, these are wicked. This quality is incredible. I man, I, I appreciate that so much. I I can't wait for uh for more people to see these because <sighs> it's so hard to explain how much work has gone into beating Amazon to get these printed. The we got that one, I think it was issue six printed fairly much no problem. And then issue seven mm -hmm. came and they denied everything for literally a month straight. And we just said, screw it, we're gonna get the next issue going, we'll find out what's happening, we'll redesign some things. We'll see what's going on. And uh, now everything is available. I'm so glad everybody could check all of these out. <laughs> didn't you say a one, the barbell or the, the, uh, the barcode was too close? I didn't even know that was a problem. I, there are so many random ass things that they, they dinged us for. They dinged us for something bleeding on one page, which actually wasn't there. There was words close to the, the barcode. That was an issue, which it wasn't. I even put a black rectangle behind where the barcode was supposed to go, and they denied that as well. <laughs> I, okay. I'm i I'm so confused by what they say is not okay. And now you'll see the back of them has changed dramatically. I had yeah. I had put illustrated covers on the back, and now it's just, it's okay, but it's not the, the exciting back that I wanted on all of them. I mean, I think it's, I think it's great though. Like I, when I got them, cause I have issue six and it has the monster squad artwork yep. on the back as well. Um, I think this is perfectly fine. I mean, I don't really look at the back. It's more the front. I'm, I'm me personally, I'm worried about, <laughs> right. I don't know, you know, but yeah, I think it looks good, dude. I think it looks great. It's, it's just awesome to actually have these cause I don't have a Kindle. I don't read things on my phone. Yeah. So I couldn't read most of the issues. Um, couldn't even read the issue that I wrote a letter into. So <laughs> to have these is, <laughs> it's such a cool, it's such a cool feeling. Man. And to have them before you is even better feeling. So, <laughs> yeah. My, mine won't be here for another week. Uh, I, I'm stoked that everybody's getting these already. Um, please, if you do get them, leave a review on Amazon. It's a, uh, it goes a long way. Helps like suggest them to other people if they see that people are interacting with them. Um, but the big thing, yeah, I, I dreamed about getting these physically for so long. And then, when once we hit the the monthly limit, because I think you have to have a minimum of twenty four pages. Once we mm -hmm. got there, it was like, well, now we have to print this every single month. There's no excuse. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm stoked to get it out there. Yeah, well, it's going to be on top of. I, there's a shelf out of view that's going to be on top of the uh, Fangoria issues over there. So just know that that's that's where it belongs. I'm honored that you're supporting it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> of course, um, of course. 
handful of pickups for me uh got in the inspector wears skirts 2 from 88 films this is for review from mvd uh this one brand new commentary from frank jang which he's incredible so uh glad that he is on there and speaking of extras tonight after the announcements we are covering five of our favorite releases like with the best extras package just everything all on the disc what makes it an, an incredible disc for us why it's one of our favorites i have I have three here that immediately when we decided on this topic, I went, those are the three I'm doing. And then I, yeah. I kind of had to go search for the other two, but man, I feel like I got a really solid top five. Um, next thing I showed him just a minute ago. Uh, this is the talk of the physical media town this week. Of course, uh, everybody complaining about the James Cameron transfers. Um, if you did not see it, I put out uh, a live video earlier this week with Paul over at twin flicks. We discussed these a little bit because man, this is so overblown. Everybody is complaining about things that, to be honest, almost don't exist. Uh, yes, there was AI enhancement used for these transfers. Little secret, it's used in most transfers from most companies. It's just not as egregious as it is with True Lies. So the way that I'm saying it is True Lies, is, it's a huge upgrade over what we had before. There are a couple scenes that's a little too glossy and it's a little weird. Um, it does get close to that Uncanny Valley feeling, but... It's not unwatchable. Uh, then after that, Aliens looks incredible. It's a massive upgrade. It's uh, easily the second best of these three. Uh, it's very, very good. But the winner, man, the Abyss looks remarkable in 4K. And from what I hear, they were trying out this process, and they they literally did it in order. They started with True Lies. They did that one. They learned a little bit, went to Aliens. They took what they learned made it better all enhanced and did the abyss last and it turned out the best of the three because they had the most experience so hopefully that means their 4k of terminator that they've recently announced will be the best ever right <laughs> yeah um yeah uh terminator and like nine other titles leaked this week and if we do get terminator and honestly uh the, the rumor is we're supposed to be getting a brand new terminator 2 uh restoration which would fix oh. what they screwed up in the last 4k um, it would be a remarkable change from what we had seen through his stuff, especially <laughs> if those look even remotely close to as good as the Abyss looks. Because these discs, uh, none of these discs are something that people should avoid unless you're hypersensitive to like the, the tiniest amount of smoothing. They still look incredible. Uh, even True Lies, which is the worst of the three, it's, it's a massive, massive improvement. I still think it's funny, man, because on Facebook groups, I see people complaining about things and words I've never heard before in my life. And uh, I, I, I want them. I want all three of them. But I yeah. just every single time I went on Amazon, the pre-order, I was like, eh, I feel like this is going to get delayed. I'm going to wait. And then now it's like if I go on Amazon, it's not delivered till middle of April. I'm like, I'm right. going to wait till this thing kind of settles down. I was like, and then I'll grab these. We, I don't need the slips. And I've heard they're already shipping without slips. Oh, uh, so we'll see. Yeah, I've I've seen some people post that they got them. I know uh, Diabolic posted all three, but without slips. Hmm. Weird. Yeah, they are not limited. Uh, the The amount of people that are scalping these discs and literally selling mm -hmm. them for like eighty bucks, ridiculous. Please don't succumb to that. These these will be here for the next couple of years at the very least. I promise. If not for at least the next five years, you'll probably be able to get them for like ten bucks in eighteen months. Just just calm down. You'll be able to get them, I promise. Uh, Walmart's last... right around the corner from announcing a steelbook of each of them anyway. So you know. That's quite possible. <laughs> quite possible. Um, last thing I wanted to share, uh, when I do some of these interviews and I post them for everybody, I get excited and sometimes go and buy things. And I recently did the Cult Epics interview and had to go track down the uh, short film that Nico was talking about on there of Pig. And it's on this uh, crazy looking Blu-ray release that he did. Uh, doubled with 1334, another of his shorts. And um, yeah, this is one I'm cool. I'm interested in seeing, uh, mostly because I'm fascinated by it, not because I'm like eager to see the torture. But uh, yeah, I, I will trust Colt Epics with almost anything. Um, he is an incredible person. Hope everybody enjoyed that interview. Uh, John says, ah, no necromantic. I've owned necromantic, I think, four different times already. <laughs> 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 um. That's it for pickups. How about some recent watches for you, my friend? Anything you've been checking out recently? Um, so I kind of been like, I recently did the Severin, I think it's the February haul. So I watched Hotspur and Scavengers, which were nice. my my first two experiences with a Crest Frost film. Um, 
both of those were, I felt like when I did the video, I had only watched them once. And I was like, I, I was like, I couldn't really like clearly articulate my thoughts. So I revisited um, Hot Spur and I, I enjoyed it so much more the second time. Nice. Uh, still need, still need revision, revisit Scavenger. But uh, of, of those three, Lola was such a surprise to me. And I don't know if you've seen that yet. Not yet. It's getting rave reviews though. Dude, it's really, I'm not like, to me, found footage it has become like the entry genre for filmmakers. And it's sort of the same recycled stuff yeah. you know, over and over again, for the most part. Um, and it did it really different. It did it low budget. It was really good. I found myself really, really in, intrigued. And it's like 83 minutes. So you can just breeze right through it. Um, so that was awesome. I'm trying to think of what else I, I watched. Um, I started diving into the Vinegar Syndrome Lost Picture Show nice. set, but I haven't finished the movie I started, and I can't remember which one it was I started. It was really late at night. Probably had work the next morning or something, <laughs> so, you know. Um, but outside of that, um, I, I finally watched the 4K release of um, House by the Cemetery by Arrow, nice. and fantastic. Such a good set. I really wish I didn't buy the Cauldron Films release of Gates of Hell. So I could buy the Arrow City of the Living Dead, so they could right. both be next to each other. Um, but lately, it's really I watched Leprechaun on on St. Patty's Day, as as we always do. Other than that, besides besides watching a show about uh, Nickelodeon and ruining my childhood, man, I've been <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching too much. <laughs> Speaking of the other talk of the town this week, um, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, that uh, inside story of Nickelodeon has been making the rounds. Yeesh. Uh, I, I'm I'm worried about it. I, I definitely want to check it out, but um, yeah, that's a uh, God. That's, the fact that they have enough footage to do multiple episodes of a crazy documentary that keeps unleashing like ridiculous details is that's scary. And and I want you to know too that five minutes before you hopped on to do this, we I was just standing in the hallway watching the infamous clip of Drake talking about his awful awful experience so that's kind of like the headspace i kicked off my night with i don't know why Sweet. but it's you know it, dude like it, i thought the same thing i was like four episodes how are they gonna fill this and there's so much more than than what you expect. Right. it's all it's awful absolutely terrible but still i i think you should watch it so. <laughs> <laughs> i absolutely will uh talk to my wife about starting it soon uh literally today we were talking about it um but the big thing this week for me i finally checked out of of the things that i can talk about that i watched this week Weird, the Al Yankovic story. I finally caught up with uh, mm. that movie from a year and a half ago or whatever. And uh, I don't know if it's just because I'm a giant Weird Al fan or because I was just hyped to watch it. It felt like a little bit of a letdown. Have you seen this one yet? I haven't yet, man. I, I never really had like a uh, like an attachment to Weird Al. And and I also I also still struggle with Daniel Radcliffe post uh, <laughs> Harry Potter, except for Guns Akimbo. Well, so. he. Uh, he disappears into the character kind of like he did with Guns Akimbo. So I, yeah. I don't think that will be a bother for you. Um, it's it's a good movie. I, I don't want to deter anybody away from it. It's definitely good. My problem, uh, I don't think there will ever be another music biopic that works because of Dewey Cox. Uh, Walk Hard, a Dewey Cox story, is it's a perfect movie. And it, unfortunately, after watching that fairly recently... Uh, it, it outshines weird by about tenfold. And uh, unfortunately, it, it, there's not really much that I feel like they could have done better in weird. It meandered a little bit in the second act. But other than that, like it was fun. That, I mean, there's a scene where there's like not not exaggerating here, like 30 cameos in less than four minutes, which is really cool. Uh, but it just it doesn't have the shine and the constant comedy like walk hard did. Um, I, I thought it was well done with the way that they did the music and all that. But other than that, Dewey Cox has ruined the genre for everyone else. It, it is do, a perfect film. Do you think that genre is ever going to fade away? I mean, probably not. It's an easy movie to make and they've got the, the script is already out there because they've made the same movie 40 times before. I yeah, mean, yeah, look, yeah, they just... we, <laughs> we just got it this year with uh, the Bob Marley movie. Yeah, and then the Amy Winehouse one is coming out as well. Yep. And I thought they're doing, they're like filming the Michael Jackson one now. I believe so. Yeah. Put in work, those guys, man. <laughs> Jeez. That's, that same script has been recycled many, many, many times. <laughs> 
Um, all right. I think that's all I've got. Uh, anything else before we jump into the announcements? No. No, I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. First thing to discuss. Uh, last week was the reveal of the Vinegar Syndrome Halfway to Black Friday tales that are coming. Uh, mm-hmm. First, we are getting Navy Seals as the VSU. We're getting China O'Brien 1 and 2 on 4K. We did know about this one. Uh, and then they announced Homegrown Horrors Volume 3, and this will feature Revenge, Haunted Ween, and Deadly Love. And then Cinematograph announced Dangerous Game on Blu-ray. Uh, these were available to pre-order all last weekend. I think one or two are still available on the site. Uh, don't forget, if you ordered these or plan on ordering any of them, they will not be shipping until after the sale at the end of May. <clears throat> so you probably won't get these till the end of June-ish, unless you're a subscriber. Uh, yeah, I, I'd watch out for those. Uh, any any of those announcements extra exciting for you? So I'm going to pick up Navy Seals for my fiance. She loves that movie. Uh, one thing I will say is I'm I'm really upset when when how do you say it? Cinematograph? Is that, yeah. Okay. So when they announced Little Darlings, I I was like I was like okay, I was like this is beautiful, but I didn't I didn't pick it up. Right now I'm kind of right. kicking myself in the butt. And then when Red Rock West got announced. I had just gotten the umbrella release. So I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, all right. and then when they announced uh dangerous game, I was like, God damn it. There's no way I'm just going to pick up the third and not try to seek out the first to have a complete collection. Right. So now I'm, now I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt, but yeah. And I just have to say, I'm not going to pick up um china o'brien but i absolutely love the vinegar syndrome acknowledge the fact that they were going to do it. i thought that was such a class a class act um you know for them to put out and say hey look we are working on it just a heads up yeah. um yeah that's really i mean i i was kind of a little i don't want to say like disappointed at the releases i feel like we have such a high expectation for the halfway to black friday so such a high and navy seals is awesome i'm super happy to see them expanding Yep. what they're touching, but I'm a little bit more intrigued at what the two mystery titles are. They sound decent. Uh, I'm I'm very excited to seek those out when the time comes, of course. Um, it's, again, Halfway to Black Friday is the second of their, their big states uh, or big slates from the year. Black Friday, they tend to go a little little bigger on, but um, yeah, e- eager to see what, what else we're getting. And then, of course, there's going to be other announcements around then, too. You know, there's the, yeah. the, these will not be everything, I'm sure, so We'll find out more. Uh, Next up on our list is Criterion already. Uh, First, June 4th, we are getting a 4K of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Uh, Now, this had come out in 4K from Arrow in the UK and I believe Turbine in Germany. So now we are in uh, the third 4K release in Criterion late to the game with this one. So many people probably picked this up. Have you seen Fear and Loathing? Yeah, man. Backcountry, dude. This is a this is a favorite of mine as well. Uh, the first first line of this movie is, "We were just past Barstow when the drugs began to take hold." And I grew up in Barstow, so uh, I, I take uh, the the line about drugs to heart, and it's absolutely accurate. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, once again, since it's a 4K release, nothing new. Literally just a 4K disc. Everything else about it is exactly the same. So, is it like you know how everybody complains about? 4k upgrades everyone's like oh you know yep. this is what companies do but I, I i think there's a big difference between the companies that are like hey we're going to put this out on 4k and we're going to give you a couple of new features right. um cri- criterion's just like nope here's a 4k disc and everything that we gave you before and the same artwork have it everything is the same except we'll put a shiny little silver sticker on the front of it yeah, that you'll throw out when you open it anyway. <laughs> right. And then you won't be able to tell if you have the 4K or the Blu-ray unless you read yeah, the back. Yeah, you'll have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Next from Criterion is Querel or Querel. I'm not sure how you say this one because I am very, very white. Uh, so this is coming on June 11th on Blu-ray and DVD. This is a brand new in, uh, introduction to the, the collection. This is a Fassbinder film. And uh, one that people have wanted for a long time. And uh, speaking of AI, this is the uh, the second of third AI, second of three AI controversies from this week. Uh, the first was the Cameron things. Uh, Stan says it's Carol. Thank you. 
than this one. Uh, everybody saw this and immediately said, wow, Criterion is allowing AI art to be used on their covers. And uh, the artist had to come out and say, no, no, no. I use 3D modeling and uh, I, I'm all open to doing stuff like that. But I did edit everything on top of the modeling. And uh, it's it was blown out of proportion for a day and a half. And everybody's still complaining about it because they don't like the cover. Um, but it it supposedly is a, a perfect fit for the film. I've not been able to see it yet, unfortunately. I've not seen many Fossbenders, but uh, this one is a an interesting insert into the collection. Any thoughts on this? <laughs> that's a, that's a hell. I, I feel like I've seen that cover in like that weird little romantic novel section of Walmart. <laughs> I think I think I've seen this cover before. No, I, I don't. I, I know nothing about this, but um, I, I mean. I'm I'm in, I'm intrigued in a weird way. <laughs> like if I if, if I was at Barnes and Noble, fifty percent off sale, and this was sitting on their very small shelf, right. I'd be like, what "The hell is this?" <laughs> uh, Keith, the film is not animated, no, uh, but it is very stylized, and uh, supposedly it is a very gay film, from what I'm what I'm hearing. So it no definitely it definitely works with this cover for sure. Uh, <laughs> even David says it's probably his gayest, which is saying something. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea based on the cover art. <laughs> well, either way, it's exciting and I'm into it. Uh, speaking of gay, uh, <laughs> Criterion <laughs> is doing Bound on 4K and Blu ray on June 18th. Um, for the record, this movie is a remarkable <clears throat> achievement. Um, I, I hope people check this out. Uh, if you've never seen this, or seen a previous release of it, like the the Olive release. Olive is, uh, you know, no more, but that release from Olive is literally one of their best. And, man, Criterion came out, and they are taking it to the next level. Um, this release looks incredible. The artwork looks great on this. We are getting on this an audio commentary with the Wachowskis. It is an old commentary. They don't really do commentaries anymore, unfortunately. Um, there's a new video essay on this by Christina Newland. There's six interview programs with a bunch of individuals from the film and uh, some trailers and a new cover by Sister Hyde, who did incredible, including, uh, as always, hiding a little secret heart in there. And you see it in the blood in the mm. bottom left corner. Uh, yeah, Sister Hyde's an incredible artist. Um, Bound. Have you seen Bound? I have. Yeah, I mean, do Jennifer Tilly. Come on. That's, you know. I, I actually saw this early on and I didn't even know that this was a movie. And then I watched it, I think a couple of years ago and I was like, Oh yeah, I remember this, but this is how you do a 4k. This is, this is it. No previous 4k release. Perfect movie. I think for the criterion, uh, it needed a restoration. It needed yep. something new. It needed to get more modern eyes on it. I think this is a perfect criterion announcement. Yep. The sums that up perfectly. Fully agree. Uh, next one is Victims of Sin from 1951. This is coming on Blu-ray. Uh, entry into the Mexican pantheon of Criterion Films. Uh, not too many of those. I'm glad they're expanding that. On this one, we've got a new interview with filmmaker and archivist Viviana Garcia Bizne. A new interview with the cinematographer on the work of Gabriel Figueroa. There's an archival documentary on this, a trailer, uh, some new sub-translations, and an essay by Jacqueline Avila. Uh, this one looks pretty dang good uh, from 1951 and uh, Mexican cinema was kind of killing it back then. That's the most criterion album or cover art I've ever seen in my life. It is a very criterion cover art. Yeah, <laughs> fully agreed. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, another kind of shocking entry to the criterion collection this month, June 25th, Blu-ray and DVD, Barry Jenkins, the underground railroad. Now, the reason this is shocking is because of the runtime on this. This is a, a miniseries. And the fact that this is coming, I believe this is the first one that they've done like this in full. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the chat there. But what this feels like is they're kind of laying, uh, laying the groundwork to get Twin Peaks The Return in the Criterion Collection, I bet. Uh, this is like setting the, the I was going to say the groundwork, but I'll say the underground work um, to make sure that people are open to it, willing to pay for it, uh, excited about it. And it's Barry Jenkins. He, he's been uh, he, he's been in the collection before. He's somebody that's an incredible filmmaker. I've been wanting to watch this. This is from uh, 2021. 
and it's got some stuff on here. We, we got some audio commentaries on certain chapters of this. We've got a new graphic novel adaptation of Genesis. It's an unfilmed chapter of the Underground Railroad, which was written by Jenkins and Nathan C. Parker. There is a companion film by Jenkins on this uh, called The Gaze. There's seven teasers, which was made by Jenkins for the Underground Railroad, a short program for uh, the building of the, the feature, and then an essay by Angelica Jade Bastien. Like, this seems like an incredible, incredible release. Dude, this is really cool. And and the, the thing is that there's so many good, like, mini series that yep. there, there's kind of like a, um, a very small line between the quality of the film and the quality of the series. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but, like, I could see Criterion doing, like, True Detective. Yep. And a couple of other things if people are willing to pay for them i mean of course obviously everybody's gonna wait for the 50 percent off sale but i think this is a super because the show is what like 546 minutes or something something like, like that, that yeah so i think this is a really cool announcement and i hope that this succeeds that way we can see kind of what they might be kind of planning in the background yeah that that would be sweet uh brandon is saying uh have i heard criterion acquired T twin peaks the return no i've not heard that uh, it's just they do everything David Lynch. And so uh, obviously they did, never did the original Twin Peaks, but I could see them doing Twin Peaks The Return because it's been looked at as like his most exciting entry in a very long time. So I, I could see them reaching into that. Uh, next up, of course, speaking of Lynch, Blue Velvet on 4K. Mm. Same exact thing as we just mentioned. No difference from the, the previous release, but we do get a 4K Blue Velvet. Um, I understand it's, uh, it's one of those things. People are either super excited because they love David Lynch or just, eh, it's just an upgrade. No big deal. But, um, either way, I I'm glad that we're getting this, uh, all, all of Lynch's stuff should be in 4k somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the Blu-ray looks fantastic. Like I, w we just watched it not long ago and I thought it looked great. Uh, I'm not going to upgrade, but Dennis Hopper with a oxygen mask on in 4k sounds pretty good to me. Exactly. Uh, anything with Hopper should be in 4K. I'll stand by that. Yeah, yeah, we don't have an Easy Rider 4K. Good call. Hopefully soon. Uh, there was an indicator sale at Orbit, and it's all over, so we're going to bypass that. Uh, Imprint in Australia announced that on June 5th, they are releasing The Prisoner, the complete series. This is The Prisoner from 1967. Uh, quite a well-known movie, and or not movie, quite a well-known show, and this is going to do very well for them. This is the... Uh, I think fifth or sixth release in the imprint TV run that they've been doing. And they are all incredible. Like the, the releases they've done for the Avengers, this is going to be a very, very good release. Uh, I, I I'm stoked for this. I'm kind of hoping to get this eventually. I hope it doesn't sell out, but again, it's, it's imprint that usually there's only 1500 copies of the, the limited version of this worldwide, but I don't know. I, I, this one feels like it could sell out quick or it could sit there for four years and I wouldn't be surprised either way. Yeah. I don't know too much about, I don't know too much about, uh, about this one at all. This has been referenced in lots and lots and lots of things. That's for sure. Is it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sipner. <laughs> Uh, all right, going to the well, and first, I guess, speaking of imprint, uh, they are announcing brand new titles probably in like 25 minutes. I think they, they're they're announcing stuff tonight, and it sounds incredible. In fact, it sounds like they're alluding to they might be releasing their after dark neo noir cinema volume three tonight, so we'll see on that. Mm. Uh, warning to everybody that collects Mondo Macabro next Thursday, they are doing their next pre-order. Uh, we got two titles that you can choose from. The first is Feta Morgana from 1965. This says a man rehearses a lecture he is planning to give analyzing serial killers. He claims that a woman is soon to be murdered in the city. It is inevitable. He explains that some people are born victims while others are born to kill. Uh, this goes into much bigger detail on that, of course. <clears throat> Uh, this is going to be region-free, new 2K restoration from the OCN, Spanish audio with English subs. There's an interview with the actress, Teresa Gimpera, on here. Interview with Angel, Angel Sala, who's the director of the Sitges Film Festival, and a commentary by Rachel Nisbet. And then if you get the Red Case Limited Edition, there's a reversible sleeve. Here is the other side of the art on that one. And then there is also a 24-page booklet with new writing by... The uh, director Aranda, or sorry, new writing on the film and director Aranda by Ismael Fernandez. 
And uh, of course, this will be limited to 1,500 copies. Have you got much from Mondo Macabro? I don't have any. Um, I always see a couple of releases of theirs that I'm interested in. For some reason, I didn't like pull the trigger on them. But uh, I'm going to take a note on this one because I'm really sold on garishly colored visuals and a hypnotic, jazzy soundtrack. So I definitely want to check this one out. I mean, to be fair, that's true of probably... 35 percent of all of the Mondo macabro titles <laughs> it's, it's like one of those labels that i feel like i i and it's not it's not to like their quality or anything but i feel like i see releases from them and i'm like oh that's so interesting but then so much time goes before i see it again i kind of forget and then i see something like this and i'm like oh yeah i gotta check them out <laughs> uh well i will say knowing the kind of stuff that you've praised heavily i kind of feel like you would love every single title they've ever released so i get their warning vibes. Fair warning, you would love them. <laughs> uh, the next title, which is the one that everybody seems to be very excited about, is uh, Sex Apocalypse. This is the uh, Spanish classified S uh, title. They are doing this now as a series, I guess. This is volume two. So the S classification is like their NC-17. Uh, so hmm. this film was originally done in two versions. There's the S-rated softcore original, and then there's also a hardcore version which uh, they made for distribution in Italy. And this two-disc di- two limited edition Blu-ray will include both versions of the film. Uh, this, of course, is starring Lena Romay, uh, who is on the slipcover here. And uh, to get that slip, you got to order through the limited release on Mondo Macabro, of course. Um, this one is going to have a brand new 2K restoration of the S-rated version of the film. Uh, there's an interview with Carlos Ared, who's the biographer of Miguel Angel Plena. Uh, interview with Spanish writer and director Richard Requant on the history of S films, and then a commentary by Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson. Uh, but then that limited release here, this is the only time you're going to be able to get this. It's going to have an extra disc entirely with that uncut 108 minute, 108 minute version of the film. And uh, this will have a slip cover and then the inner sleeve, which will be new and uncensored. It won't have the band aids on there, of course. Uh, and you'll get a 20 page booklet by Ismael Fernandez. This looks like an incredible release. Um, fair warning to everybody, if you do order this on your receipt, it will say S Apocalypse, just to avoid any problems with PayPal. I'm buying this as soon as the stream is over. Like, <laughs> It's not available till next Thursday. So set, I'm set buying this arm. next Thursday after your next stream is over. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah, there, there's so much coming from... Uh, from Mono Macabro, they sent out a uh, an email earlier today. Which, uh, if you have not seen it, everybody should go out there and check out this email. Let me see if I can pull it up in my other screen while I'm trying to look for this. Because, oh man, uh, they basically just announced the rest of the um, slate for the rest of the year. So here it is. Uh, they said the ever evolving 2024 schedule in early summer, we are getting the warrior trilogy is a two disc slip, sco- slip cover set. We're also going to get a seventies French erotica, two disc slip cover set, possibly one more release, but likely just those two. And then in the late summer, four brand new limited edition titles, all for the first time on us home video ever. Uh, one of them an Indonesian horror, one of them a Spanish giallo, and then a Japanese and French 70s exploitation pair of shockers. Uh, then the Halloween sale. There will be three 4K releases, including the one that we've been talking about for the last year and a half, Cafe Flesh. Uh, it is going to be a big year for Mono Macabro, that's for sure. Dude, why, why have I not? This is dangerous dude this is like (laughs) this is like like my alley this is fully this is it right here yeah uh mono macabro has the sleeves that you like they have that uh well-made art house tinge to the sleeves they've also got just the absolute depraved releases every so often that you're like (sighs) how did this get made um i i secretly i will say in my heart of hearts i still feel like mono macabro is one of the the last remaining pioneering labels out there uh they they go they go for the throat on every single release um they put their all into everything and then on top of that they're all just amazing movies literally i don't think there's ever been one that i've watched from their catalog that i go you know what this kind of sucked yeah it's companies like this that i wish they would do like a uh 
like a subscription for, like a subscriber thing that I could yep. just pay for, forget about it until a package shows up because everything you've talked about, I am a hundred percent in intrigued. So <laughs> Yeah, they are they are they're they're pretty amazing. Even everybody needs to buy that uh Bollywood horror box set that they put out if you've never checked it out. Because oh my god, it is it is a gift to physical media and it, it has not done well for them. So I, I'm still sad about that. Oh man. Yeah, I'm I'm buying some tonight. <laughs> yeah, uh sure. next up, Kino announced coming coming soon, the visitors from 19 uh 1972. This is a Ilya Kazan film. Uh I don't think I've seen this one. Uh, starring James Wood, Steve Railsback, uh, Patrick McVeigh, Chico Martinez, Patricia Joyce. Uh, any? Have you seen this one? Any thoughts? No. Half of Kino announcements, ninety nine percent of the time, I'm like, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> half of Kino announcements, ninety nine percent of the. Okay, so you've seen none of them. Ninety nine percent of the time, fifty percent of their <laughs> announcements, I don't know what they are. <laughs> Uh, next, May 14th on Blue from Kino is Daisy Miller from 1974. This is a Peter Bogdanovich film that people have been dying to get on a really nice Blu-ray, and it looks like we have it here. Uh, brand new 4K restoration done by Paramount. There's a new interview with Sybil Shepard in this, talking about uh, remembering Daisy Miller. There's a new audio commentary by Peter Tunget. Uh, there is a archival commentary by Bogdanovich, uh, and then an introduction by Bogdanovich as well. This will be a solid, solid release for everybody that loves his stuff. I know it's a director that people really, really go for, so I'm glad this is coming out there. Yeah, I'm happy for people that are waiting for this. I, <laughs> I have no interest. I'm sorry. <laughs> I completely get it. Uh, things that I have an uh, immense interest in. Uh, May 10th, we are getting a 4K and Blu-ray release of Queen, Rock Montreal, and Live Aid from Mercury Studios. Uh, growing up, I was a massive Queen fan. Um, Wayne's World was a seminal moment for me, screaming along to Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, my, my parents raised me on uh, hair metal from the 80s. And uh, I, I am dying to get this release. It is all of the best songs done in like the peak of their performance. Um, you also got even an audio commentary on here by Brian May and Roger Taylor. There's performance footage and uh, rehearsing for Live Aid. There is just so much on this. And the fact that it's in 4K, I am dying to pick this up. That's for sure. Yeah, if, if, if there's somebody watching this who has never seen any footage of Queen's performance at Live Aid, you it's a... It's a must watch, even in standard 720 on on YouTube. <laughs> but also check out the 4K. <laughs> also check out the 4K. <laughs> uh, next up, Alphaville coming on 4K from Kino. This is uh, not dated yet, of course. No idea when it's coming, but it's a Jean Luc Godard film. And uh, if you are interested in this, I uh, want to highlight Def Crocodile's comment. You should check out The Unknown Man of Shandigore, which is an incredible title in the Def Crocodile slate. Uh, I think that was their first physical release, if I'm remembering right. And man, that movie blew me away the first time I watched it. So highly recommend The Unknown Man of Shandigore. But uh, Godard, I, uh, I'm usually pretty hit or miss on. So uh, I've not seen this one, but interested to check it out. This is part of the 50%. Understood. Uh, probably this one, too. Uh, May 14th on Blu-ray, Kino's releasing Big Man on Campus. This is one they announced last year. This has a new audio commentary by the director, Jeremy Kagan, and Andrew Bentler also. Uh, there's including a new interview with actor and screenwriter Alan Katz on this. Uh, this is going to be a pretty dang good disc for a movie that is pretty much forgotten by a lot of people. Uh, glad this is coming out, and uh, hope people pick it up. This is one that I saw, and I was like, I actually, I, I've never seen this, but I know this movie. So fifty per, the other 50%. <laughs> we got a rare one, everybody. Uh, <laughs> next up, uh, another one of my favorites. June 4th, we are getting a 4K steelbook of Rango from Paramount. Uh, the steelbook design's pretty rad. I'm just glad this movie is getting more attention and more love. This movie, I mean, it's, it's also... It's kind of telling and ironic that we're talking about this the same week that Fear and Loathing was announced. Uh, there's yeah. so many parallels between those two movies, but Rango is is a modern masterpiece of animation. Highly recommend it. Super underrated. Uh, so many people didn't watch this because it came out in that that glut of like 
DreamWorks titles that were kind of overbearing, and a lot of people just looked the other way. This looks incredible. Yeah, I feel like every time I bring this is one of my favorites. I feel like every time I bring this up, the people they're like, "Oh yeah, I forgot about that." Yep. So this is exactly. awesome to see. Yeah, can't wait to see this 4K. Hopefully, it looks amazing. It's Paramount, so it could go either way. Um, uh, self promotion for a quick moment. Uh, put out the interview with Altered Innocence this week. Uh, I promised that last week, and uh, I'm so glad that we could finally have this out. I, I did this interview with Frank like six or seven weeks ago and was just sitting on it for a long time um this this was such a long time coming i i first reached out to frank a little over like somewhere around like two years ago and they have grown in leaps and bounds since then he has been incredibly busy and i i hope people check out this interview because the amount of knowledge and passion for the type of films that he put out it radiates through this entire conversation. It was fun. Like I, I felt like it was just two people that, that love his films, just hanging out for an hour. And it was, it was just a good time. Yeah. As somebody who doesn't own um, many altered innocence titles. Uh, one of the things I love about like film in general is just being able to appreciate uh, the, the passion behind it. And even though I didn't know, half of the titles you guys were were talking about are brought up i just enjoyed listening to two people talk about what they love so if anything it was worth worth it 100 percent for that nice well thank you you're welcome uh next up vestron continues uh re-releasing their discs in steelbooks uh may 14th walmart exclusive steelbook of the gate is coming Nothing new, still the exact same uh, Blu-ray that they put out a handful of years ago. No new special features, just a Blu-ray steelbook. Um, again, this uh, this was in, in their okay period of transfers, but this one didn't really look that great, unfortunately. I, I, I think that this deserves a little bit of a new restoration or a, an upgrade. To, I don't really want to say an upgrade to 4K necessarily, but this one needs some help. Um, but I understand loving the steelbook. It, it is a very nice steelbook for this movie. I can't really complain about that. I think that's the best art they've done for any of the steelbooks yet. Yeah, probably. And the next one we're about to talk about is pretty damn good too, actually. Yeah. So I'm going to jump to that one. Uh, the Lair of the White Worm. Um, the same thing. They're doing another re-release. Still May 14th. Still mm -hmm. Walmart exclusive. Um, this movie is a great movie. The Vestron scan of this is not good. It is a fairly muddy scan. Um, the Steelbook, though, blows everything in that release out of the water. This is a beautiful Steelbook. Uh, I am... <laughs> I, I'm stoked about it. I'm laughing at a Def Crocodile's comment. My mom just asked me if I could send her a dead alligator pin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that uh, yeah. cover rules. That, that, my only problem is, man, I have like 20 of these with slips and this is one of the titles that i'm that i'm missing that i haven't put out the 25 30 35 dollars for yet right so i'm hoping i don't know if vestron collectors are going to like replace the slip versions some are already and that and that price will come down a little bit because i'm not i'm not throwing one steel book on the vestron shelf with the rest of the slips it's just not happening I'm. I would not be surprised if all of the Vestrons uh, that are getting replaced, which I don't know if all of them are getting replaced. That would be intense if they did all of them, obviously. But uh, the ones that are getting replaced, I imagine the slip versions are going to drop in price by mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. The steelbook looks good, and it's a it's a okay price. Uh, it's I, in fact, if I remember right, I think it's even cheaper than the original Blu-ray with the slipcover when it came out, even after inflation and all that. So. Yeah. How much are these at Walmart when they come out? This, I the think Vestron it's ones? 25. 25 okay. or 20, something like that. But this is uh, the, the Vestron line. A lot of people forget this because Vestron has been super cheap for the last couple of years. Uh, Vestron, for their first 19 releases, they were $30 on release day mm -hmm. and didn't go on sale hardly ever. Uh, and then yeah. after they started lowering their prices, I think they got called out because it's you you own the films you don't have to pay licensing why are you charging so much for these uh once they they got wind of that and they started releasing things for like 12 dollars, then the prices started to come down on everything and people started to like diabolic has done like three vestron sales since then where everything was super cheap well i was just at monster mania and they had 
like five or six older Vestron releases. Like I'm talking like in the teens of the like they had like a couple really early ones with slips for like twenty bucks wow. just on the table. I was like, man, these things are still around. They're <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are a lot of slips available for these things that's for sure yeah uh next up decal and bleaker street are teaming together to put out sasquatch sunset this is coming on may 28th uh ari aster is executive producer on this and uh man does this movie sound fun it says in the misty forest of north america a family of sasquatches possibly the last of their enigmatic kind embark on an absurdist epic hilarious and ultimately poignant journey over the course of one year these shaggy and noble giants fight for survival as they find themselves on a collision course with the ever-changing world around them uh in this we got jesse eisenberg riley keogh and uh david and nathan zellner are the directors behind this and they call it the greatest bigfoot story ever told uh we've got a sasquatch birth journal number two in this uh, and then there is a short film that was presented at Sundance called Sasquatch Filmmaking. Uh, either way, this sounds super fun. I remember the uh, reviews out of Sundance being pretty good. Did you see the trailer for this? I've not watched the trailer yet, no. Okay, so I put it on. I was just watching trailers sitting on, sitting on my couch next to my fiance. And I, I was like, what the hell is this movie? So the trailer starts and about 10 seconds in. Uh, it just cuts to a shot of Sasquatch doggy style. And it's not, <laughs> it's not like YouTube friendly at all. And she just looked at me. She's like, what the hell are you watching? <laughs> like, oh, man. no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's how it goes, unfortunately, sometimes. Uh, next up, this is one of the biggest announcements of the week for sure. Bad mm. Lieutenant from 1992 <clears throat> coming on 4K on May 21st from Kino Lorber. This was announced a handful of months ago, I believe, or maybe it was, maybe it was last May. I think actually this one almost took a full year to come out. Um, so on this one, of course, brand new 4K restoration of the film from the original camera negative, which is great. We get a new interview with the cinematographer Ken Kelsch, and then new locations featurette on Bad Lieutenant. Uh, but the big thing, of course, is this is notorious for having an unrated cut and an NC-17 cut. Uh, I looked up the uh, the film on the Kino website, and it looks like this is going to be the unrated cut. Unfortunately, I do think it's going to be missing. There is a song that's been cut out of literally every other release of this, except, I think, the Laserdisc. And I, I'm mm -hmm. doubting that we're going to be getting that full cut, but it is... The first time in a long time that we're getting the unrated cut, it's going to be in great 4K. I'm sure this is going to be a remarkable disc that'll sell very, very well for them. Yeah, this is definitely, I think, going to be one of the releases of the year for them, for sure. Nice call out. Yeah, uh, this sounds good, and it's it's Harvey Keitel in uh, super, super young Harvey Keitel era. Uh, this is, this is an incredible movie. It's been a long time since I've seen this, but super into it. And it's, uh, it's another Bill or Abel Ferrara film. Um, I, I know that people have been into him and we've been getting a lot of releases from Ferrara lately. So stoked on it. Yeah. And then hopefully we can get a 4k of the Nicolas Cage, bad Lieutenant sometime soon from Kino and you can do a double feature. That would be nice. Uh, May 28th in a 4K steelbook from Warner Brothers is the 1989 Batman. And a lot of people hated this when I posted this because of the cover. Um, I just wanted to point out, just in case you did not realize, this is literally just Warner Brothers releasing a standalone uh, steelbook of what they did in their steelbook collection from a handful of years ago. There's nothing different. It's the same disc. It's the same steelbook. Uh, this is... Not something that everybody needs to complain about. If they end up doing all four of them, they do look really nice together. I understand you didn't need the word Batman over the bat cover on the front. It's not that big of a deal. Come on. It's just a silly steelbook. Yeah, this is... I thought the same thing. I was. I don't have the, 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 the steelbook uh, set that they put out. Yeah. But I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the same exact steelbook that was in that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Craig says, I thought the point of Steelbooks was they were supposed to have great new artwork. Well, if you ask the studios, the point of Steelbooks is to have collectors buy them. <laughs> that is literally the yep. definition. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. Next up, uh, 
well, we already talked about this, but uh, just so you know, uh, on top of all of the old releases of the Physical Media Advocate, there is a brand new issue that just dropped this last week. Um, we got some great pieces in this one, including a really fun piece on Richard Kelly. Really fun piece. Look at that. Really fun piece on Godzilla. Uh, there is a, a section recommending um, adult films from Vinegar Syndrome from uh, film blogger Sam. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty great issue, if I can say so myself. Next up, one we rarely hear from, Flickr Alley. They are putting out Never Open That Door from 1952. That is coming on June 4th on Blu-ray. Uh, this is preserved by the Film Noir Foundation and uh, UCLA Film and Television Archive. And this is going to have an introduction uh, to uh, the two films. Because, yeah, actually there's two films on this by Eddie Muller, who is involved in noir all the time. Uh, if I Should Die Before I Wake is going to be on this. There is a rare archival conservation scan of that uh, third film in the trilogy. There's an audio commentary for Never Open That Door by uh, Guido Segal, a new documentary in Cornell Woolrich, and then a handful of some other things. This is a solid release, and if you like classic film, I'm sure you already know Flickr Alley is great at what they do. Um, but what they are producing tends to get overlooked by a lot of people. So highly recommend checking out some of their stuff. If you're into some of the classics, um, they are a little pricey. I will say when they come out, they, they tend to hover around 35 bucks on their website. And then this, when they have a sale, the, the sale price is like 28. So it's rough, uh, but they, they're generally worth it. I mean, they put a lot of work into it. This is the kind of company that you, you feel good about supporting because the work that they're doing. So it says that it was originally a three part anthology. So this is one film that was in that anthology. I believe you actually get or... all three. Oh, okay. Okay. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, anthology Woolrich tells never open that door was released separately from the 73 minute film. If I should die before I wake adapted by the screenwriter, blah, blah, blah. An exceedingly rare archival conservation scan of if I should die before I wake is featured in this release. Okay. That's cool. So either two out of the three or all three. I, I'm not sure if that, f they don't really explain that super well. Yeah, Everybody's seen this, let I, me know. Yeah, when I read that, that was just, that, that intrigued me. Yes, yes, it does. Me too. Uh, Nicomedes is asking, is Vestra on the label partnering with Eureka? No, uh, I don't know of any label partnering with Eureka. The only thing I know is Eureka is releasing in the U.S. through MVD Entertainment. It's just, mm -hmm. that's their distributor. So there's not really a company partnering with Eureka. Yeah, that was cool that they announced um, like Grindhouse releasing, uh, distributing for them and then Eureka. The MVD is getting, they're getting packed. Yep, that's for sure. Uh, Altered Innocence actually is uh, going through MVD as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Speaking of MVD, July 9th, uh, MVD is re-releasing The World of Kanako. This is from 2014. This was previously a Draft House Films release, the imprint of the Alamo Draft House, and they they did nothing brand new. It's just the exact same disc coming back out. All of the Draft House Films releases went out of print, and this was last I checked, this was going for like 80 to $100 on eBay. So mm. um, this will this will immediately lower the price on that, and everybody will be able to see this. This movie is supposed to be incredible. I've not seen this one, but it looks great. Yeah, this is this is this intrigued me when you posted this. This intrigues me. It says it's a nonstop visual and emotional assault to the senses. I am into that immediately. Sold. Yeah, sold. Uh, maybe the second biggest announcement of the week for many people that are around my age. Uh, April 30th, we are getting Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island from Warner Archive. Uh, unfortunately, they are pairing it with the inferior sequel, Scooby-Doo Return to Zombie Island. But we are getting that first feature from 1998, which is really cool. Um, I I'm glad that we're getting those. Uh, we've got the full cut of this. Um, it is a good restoration, I'm sure. Warner Archive never disappoints on that front, so... More animation means I am happy. Yeah, this is a day one for me. Absolutely, 100%. Has to be. Uh, next up, we are getting You're a Big Boy Now from 1966. And uh, man, this is interesting because it's Francis Ford Coppola's UCLA Film School Master Thesis. How often does that happen that we get physical media releases 
of a UCLA film school master thesis. Uh, obviously, this mm. one is a little bit different considering it's Francis Ford Coppola with Rip Torn and Geraldine Page and a handful of others. And uh, this even uh, was nominated for an Academy Award, which is wild. Yeah, Geraldine Page was nominated. Oh. This is a big, big deal. So is this before, because if I'm not mistaken, he did, what was his, what was Francis Ford Coppola's first, but it was Dementia, Dementia 13, right? Yes, Speaking I believe that came 13. after this one. Okay, after this. Okay, because I, I I watched Dementia 13, the Vestron release, not long ago, and I was like, I thought it was a really, it was really interesting to watch, kind of see where his career has gone. Because uh, I just, before that, I watched uh, The Outsiders again. So this will be this will be really interesting to uh, to yeah. see. This one I might be interested in. Yep, this is a good one. And if you're going to pick this one up, you may as well pair it with The Rain People, another Coppola release. Uh, this one's starring Shirley Knight, James Caan, Robert Duvall. Um, no extras on this except for the trailer, but this is one that people have wanted for a long time. Also, may just be me. Even though it's simple, this is a, a beautiful cover on this. Uh, yeah. I, th something about the simplicity of this is just perfect. Um, I, I've not been able to see this one, but I definitely wanted it. Oh, Dementia 13 preceded that one. Thanks, Nicomedes. Oh. I could have sworn it came right after. Uh, then we got Friendly Persuasion from 1956. Uh, this one is going to have an excerpt for Wide Wide World television series on the making of the film, the original trailer, and then, of course, uh, this is going to star Gary Cooper and Anthony Perkins and Dorothy McGuire. I've not seen this one. This is the one that I think I saw the, the least amount of people talking about. Yeah, I don't know nothing about that, but that's a cool bonus feature, though. Yeah, I, I'm glad that that's on there. Um, oh, thanks, Craig. Uh, in fact, if, if you if you are a fan of Craig's, there's all kinds of Deaf Crocodile on those physical media advocate uh, releases. Craig wrote... Craig wrote a couple long pieces uh, that we that we carried over across two episodes or two issues. That is, it's a really great piece. That honestly, I've gotten the most feedback on that piece, probably compared to everything else in all of them. Uh, people really love that piece. Um, the lab, maybe the last. I may be wrong. Uh, the next one from Warner Archive, the Nun story from 1959. This is a big deal. Uh, Audrey Hepburn. This is one of the last titles of Audrey Hepburn's. I think we have like two more left coming to to Blu-ray eventually. Uh, or that need to come to Blu-ray still. Um, this is a big one, uh, one that people have wanted for quite some time. Uh, very, very like lauded film, including uh, it was nominated for Best Picture. Um, mm. Lots of uh, lots of great names attached mm. to this, and it's Audrey Hepburn who who's always great. Yeah, I already covered Scooby Doo. Thanks, Sibner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, April 30th from Warner Archive, The Mask of Fu Manchu, which means now we're getting very close to uh, fulfilling all of uh, this. Um, I, I think they've got one more film or two more films in this era that they've been putting out uh, ever so slowly of these horror classics. Uh, mm -hmm. This is going to have a commentary by Greg Mink on here. And then we got some classic cartoons, Freddy the Freshman and the Queen was in the parlor. Uh, glad we are getting this Boris Karloff one all the way back from 1932 also stars Myrna Loy. That's a big name for quite a few people. Yeah, this is a cool one. When I saw this, I was interested, immediately intrigued. So I can't wait to check this one out. It's Karloff. Kind of gotta. Of course. Yeah. All right. Eureka. Now we were just talking about them. Uh, June 24th in the UK and then June 25th in the U S and Canada, they are giving us a Blu-ray of the miracle fighters. Uh, this one is with uh, Yun Wu Ping, and it's going to have a uh, new audio commentary by the man, the myth, the legend, Frank Jang. Also another new commentary by Mike Leader and Arna Venema. I'm always stoked when they get both of those groups, basically, to, to do a new commentary. It's so great to be spoiled like that. Uh, interview with Yun Wu Ping, that's a, an archival interview. New documentary feature by Michael Wirth on y Yun Wu Ping, and then Reversible Sleeve on this one with a limited edition booklet with new writing by James Oliver. Eureka! You got money by them? Um, I don't. This is actually like this is a, a, a genre I need to get into more. Um, I didn't grow up watching a lot of 
a lot of kung fu, a lot of that kind of stuff. Even even like it, it took me until this year to really get into like uh, Hong Kong action. It actually started with um, I got sent a copy of uh, the In the Line of Duty movies, and that I watched those, and I was like, man, I need to dive into this a little bit more. So I'm kind of starting. I have some Arrow uh, stuff that they've put out recently uh, that I want to dive into and see if I can kind of this becomes a genre I can become you know more into. Well, good luck, because uh, fans of martial arts have been eating well over the last couple of years. If you, oh, yeah. if you get into it, there is every title under the sun to choose from. <laughs> yeah. uh, next up is the Red Peony Gambler 1 through 3. This is from 1982, uh, coming on June 17th in the UK only on Blu-ray from Eureka. This is going to have a slipcover, and it will have a new audio commentary on all three films. Uh, Tony Raines is speaking on this new interview with uh, him. Then there's trailers and a collector's booklet with new writing on this one. I've never seen any of these. I, I saw a handful of uh, good comments about this one. So curious to check this out. Definitely want to look at some reviews first. Uh, and then now, saw, go ahead. I saw it said it was inspired. It inspired, I guess, Quentin Tarantino for Kill Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is one of the big ones. Okay. Interesting. And then uh, out of nowhere, uh, they announced a uh, U.S. and Canada exclusive. So they're not releasing this in the U.K., which uh, made some people really pissed off for fans of Eureka. They're releasing Beast Fighter, which includes Karate Bullfighter and Karate Bear Fighter. These are coming on the 25th of June in the U.S. and Canada. These are both from 1975, both starring Sonny Chiba. Um, if I had to guess... I'm willing to bet that both of these have animal scenes that the UK would not allow released in in the UK. So that's probably why it's not coming out. Yeah, I mean, look at the abyss. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, this one is going to have a new commentary on both movies by Mike Leader and Arn of Enema. And then we got a new video essay by Jonathan Clements on this. And then a booklet with new writing by Eddie Falvey. Um, for fans of Sunny Chiba, I'm glad this is coming out. This is this is a big deal. Eureka doing exclusives for the U.S. though. That's that's kind of a surprising thing because they they could have a lot of titles considering what they've been putting out over the last couple of years. Excuse my ignorance to the genre, but I think this was one of the titles I picked up the Executioner Collection from Era. I think that's Sunny Chiba, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay, so so that's going to be my first foray into some Sunny Chiba because I picked that up during the nice. last Barnes and Noble sale. So. And if you're into it, I believe there are one or two Sonny Chiba collections from Shout as well. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's there's quite a bit from Sonny Chiba out there. Uh, then Kino announced May 21st, they are re-releasing their uh, copy of Revenge of the Ninja from 1983. This will have a new audio commentary with, once again, Mike Leader and Arna Venema. Uh, this is another one of their, hey, we realized that old release sucked, and so we're doing it a little bit better. They are taking their 2015 disc and coding it at a higher bit rate and putting it on a BD50 disc, and it will have uh, a little bit better presentation, of course, and then a new audio commentary. It also has English subs, which that first one didn't. So this is uh, an okay upgrade. I know there's a lot of people that were begging for a 4K release, but I don't even think this will probably ever get a 4K scan. So uh, unfortunately, this is probably going to be the best we get for at least another handful of years. Props to them for at least adding a new commentary. Yeah, I, I think I think in this day and age, if you're going to just re-release the same film on the same format, you got to do something new for sure. Yeah, yeah. A uh, handful of more releases came out this afternoon. May 28th, uh, Vertical Entertainment is putting out The Bricklayer from Rennie Harlan, uh, starring Aaron Eckhart. Two names I never expected to say in the exact same sentence. Uh, glad this is coming out. I've not seen this. I've not heard any reviews or anything. This is from last year. Uh, I did put a trailer on here. It looks, it looks very modern action cliche type film, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is odd. Aaron Eckhart was like one of the most desired actors in Hollywood for a handful of years. And now he is, uh, acting in a Rennie Harlan film in 2023 called The Bricklayer. Uh, yeah. Just just wait until you hear uh, Rennie Harlan directing a Strangers Trilogy. That's that really I shocking. understand a little bit more, uh, <laughs> funny enough. Yeah, I can't wait for the Strangers Chapter 2, Strange Harder. <laughs> Even more strange. 
<laughs> look at that tagline. The tagline is some secrets <laughs> are deadly. Come on. Yes. Uh, next, uh, film movement is putting out hotel from 2004 in a 20th edition, uh, 20th anniversary edition, Blu-ray release on June 25th. This movie does not look terrible. This movie looks fantastic. Uh, the trailer for this is linked. If you've not checked it out, please go check it out. Not seen this. Uh, also not sure if this is going to come as an OCN partner label release since film movement is now partnered with them. It could, uh, but also it very well could just be a standard on their site. Unfortunately, um, this movie does though look really, really well done. The acting looks incredible. I am I'm most likely getting this one as soon as possible because it sounds and looks like a stupendously made movie. Yeah, I watched the trailer and I was interest immediately interested. So I can't wait to check this one out. Good, 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 good. Uh next up, only a couple left, I think. Uh Drive Away Dolls. This is coming on June 17th in the UK on Blu-ray. This is a brand new movie from uh Ethan Cohen. And uh, it is coming around that time in the U.S. as well. You can already pre-order in the U.S. But the U.K. is getting quite a different release. They're getting a Blu-ray and DVD double feature, uh, rigid slipcase, three theatrical postcards, and a 32-page booklet. And nothing like that will happen in the U.S., I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, I, I wish they would. Uh, unfortunately, this probably won't get picked up by Orbit or anybody like that. If you want it, you're probably going to have to import from Amazon. Yeah, this is. Um, I actually liked the trailer for this, um, so I, I was intrigued. But I just wish the U.S. would get cool stuff like this, man. Like when when they did, um, I forget when they did uh, Chucky season one and two, and they released the Good Guy editions. Mm -hmm. I, I missed out on importing those, but those I was like, dude, that's ten times cooler than what we got here. So, so much, much better. Cooler. Yeah, jealous. Uh, finally, for this week, we are ending. On a June 11th release from Paramount of South Park, joining the Panderverse. Uh, my big question, I haven't watched South Park in a very, very long time. Isn't this only like the length of an episode? Or maybe at <laughs> most like 45 minutes? How is this getting a standalone Blu-ray release instead of just going in the season collection? Is Are people still waiting on a release of the, the movie? Did that has that come out on Blu-ray yet? The South Park, the bigger, longer, whatever. What, I'm not a South Park fan, so I don't know what that South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. Um, yeah. Thank you, Tony. Tony says it's only 48 minutes. Um, 48 yeah. minutes. Why is this a standalone release? It should be with the season. Um, I believe uh, we are getting the film from Paramount this year in 4K, which is wild. Mm. Um, <laughs> yes, it was a special on Paramount Plus. But also, wasn't there another special around the season as well? Couldn't you put them both together? It's 48 minutes. I don't know. Paramount does weird things. It's, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna, th th is there anybody out there who owns every season of South Park and revisits the those ever? Does anybody do that? <laughs> I mean, I have. I've got the first, I think it's the first 20 seasons on Blu-ray. That's crazy. It's like The Simpsons. It's like I, I used to back when I when I started collecting. I was getting DVDs. I bought um, I bought uh, like I went to a pawn shop and they had like the first like thirteen seasons of The Simpsons, and I bought them. And then I was like, I'm I'm never gonna watch these again, probably ever. So I ended up giving them back to the same <laughs> pawn shop. <laughs> Tony Tony in Australia says I have all twenty six seasons and specials so far. Nice, nice. And then Eric says, I have the first movie on Blu-ray, that's it, but I do enjoy the early seasons. Yeah, the early seasons are where it was at, for sure. Uh, after we go over the announcements, we go over what is coming out next week, just in case you forgot. Uh, it is the, the last week of the month, so it's going to show all of the Vinegar Syndrome and OCN things. Those are already shipping for most people. Um, next week, we got To Die For from Criterion in 4K, Primal Fear 4K from Paramount, The Iron Claw from A24. Did you watch that one yet, Iron Claw? No, no, I'm, I I pre-ordered it, so I'm going to watch it uh, as soon as it comes in. Damn good movie. Uh, the Amelie Steelbook, again, this is a Blu-ray, not a 4K. Uh, Burial Ground 4K from Severin. Did you watch that one yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great great transfer on that one. That one's totally worth it. I, I knew the answer. I was trying to get you to, to wax poetic. Yeah, that, that, movie, <laughs> that movie is wild, and uh, I'm glad they gave it a 4K. Um, next week, we get They Drive by Night from Warner Archive. The uh, 
Cult Epic's release of All Ladies Do It 4K from Tinto Brass is finally getting released. Berserk, the complete series uh, from uh, Discotech. Paint Your Wagon 4K from Kino Lorber, if you're into that. Wednesday, the complete first season. Three Godfathers from Warner Archive. When Evil Lurks from RLJE, eager for that one. Uh, a little movie called Bubble Bath from, uh, is, is it pronounced Death Crocodile, I think? Uh, the Bounty Hunter trilogy from Radiance will be available for everybody, even though you've already been able to buy that on Orbit and everything. Stand and Deliver from Warner Archive. That's a big one. North Dallas 44K from Kino. Money Talks from Warner Archive. Night of the Blood Monster, a.k.a. The Bloody Judge, coming in 4K from Blue Underground. Uh, we've got a handful of others. Patrick 4K, I think, is finally coming out from Indicator. Uh, the Batwoman from Indicator as well. Snapshot 4K from Indicator as well. Uh, Inspector Wear Skirts 2 that I just showed everybody. That's coming out. The Boob and Why Be Good double feature from Warner Archive. I know people are long wanting that one. Uh, the Panther Women double pack. Uh, sorry, the Panther Women is a digi pack release from Indicator. Santo versus the Riders of Terror. Uh, lots coming out. Saint Omer, The Little Drummer Girl from Warner Archive. Film Noir, The Dark Side of Cinema, number 18. 18. Jesus. Uh, let's see. I think that was about it for all the big ones. Unless you're really dying to see Polar Rescue with Donnie N from Wellgo USA. Um, yeah. I think we are scraping the bottom of this here barrel. Uh, any coming out next week that you are eager to have or already picked up and love? Uh, so I have One Evil Lurks coming in because I feel like it's been forever since that, like, you know, came out. I feel like yeah. it's been a year, but, you know. Um, and then I have uh, All Ladies Do It. To, to continue my Tinto Brass collection. I got that coming in as well. Nice, nice. Yeah, I did the uh, Kickstarter for that Tinto Brass and eager to see that book that they do. Yeah, uh, yeah. More Mara Tierney coming to Blu-ray is always a great thing. Amen to that. Watched The Abyss last night. If there was ever a reason to get a 7.1 setup, it's that one, Ryan. Looks and sounds amazing. I know it's my next big purchase, I promise. Uh, Saw someone post an image of going south on Twitter. Why is it oversized? Uh, well, Cinematograph is doing that for all of their releases. It's an oversized media book. I yeah, it's 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 quite a bit larger. It's a uh, pretty damn big, unfortunately. Uh, and then, of course, the poignant "What an expensive hobby!" and Jimmy yes. the Lift just says yes. Uh. <laughs> yeah, expensive expensive hobby is not the word, not the phrase to explain it. I'm broke. I'm broke all the time. <laughs> same, same. Uh, okay, so like we said at the top, tonight we are discussing bonus features, uh, why we like them, what makes a good one, uh, some of these discs that are extra stacked, and uh, now the question is, why do you like bonus features, and, and what do you look for in bonus features? <clears throat> so I feel like I feel like for me, I've always been infatuated with 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 the making of things you know what i mean that's that's always it and i feel like i i guess our generation of collecting with dvds we were spoiled with them um uh, because it was rare i felt like most of the dvds that i owned had pretty good bonus features for the most part um so when i watched the movie i i, I would always be living in that world of the film so i wanted to stay in it so i would just watch bonus features and sometimes there were actually some releases where i would watch the bonus features more than the movie because of just weird fatuations with things yeah. um so when when i started um really kind of wanting to to learn more and understanding more um that's one of the things when when i sit down and i look at a release and i want to buy it the first list i go to is bonus features and a lot of times that's a a good selling point for me so yeah um especially nowadays when you're seeing releases that are anywhere from you know 30 dollars for a standard release on release day up to i mean some of these like uh the uh, dawn of the dead from second sight i think that was still the most expensive single film release i've ever bought it was like mm -hmm. what 112 i think for one I movie think, yeah yeah i think it was a uh, hundred and yeah it was like 112 yeah. something like that and uh if, if it had if it had no bonus features i there's no way i could ever justify paying that much for a single movie of course but when, when you yeah. look at what some of these releases are getting um the movie sometimes 
is the bonus feature for me. And everything else mm -hmm. that we're getting on that disc is the reason why I want it. So the fact that the fact that some of these labels are able to go literally to the ends of the earth to track down filmmakers, to track down people that are long thought dead in some cases, or to get people mm -hmm. that are uh, unable to, um, you know, they, they don't travel for interviews. So you find somebody like Eugenio Ercolani who's on the ground in Italy and can go interview everybody because he's there. Mm -hmm. uh, the stuff that we get on some of these discs is literally a miracle. And I've said it many yeah. times on this channel before, but there, there are two big things that I think is super important about these bonus features. One is these are literally like film school in a box. Uh, mm -hmm. For a lot of us, you can't afford, I can't afford to suddenly drop everything and go to UCLA for four years and pay $120,000 in tuition <laughs> every year to, to find out why somebody did a certain shot in the third year of my program. Uh, but at that point, you may as well just go and listen to a lot of audio commentaries. So many of these mm -hmm. directors saying everything, why we made a choice sometimes for like 20 minutes about one shot. And the fact that you can get that much detail, it, it's a gift. It's literally, and you paid like $20 for the disc. And the fact that you can mm -hmm. look at that and go, damn, okay. So that's why this is impressive. That's when this gets special for me. The other big yes. thing, uh, sorry, before you go once, th one thing we're losing, all kinds of these filmmakers that are at that verge of dying without these special features, we lose them, their, their voices, their, their presence, their stories, everything about those as well. So th those are the two main reasons that I love these go right ahead. And well, a lot of time too, uh, you know, they are bonus features, they're companions for the most part. They're done right. It's a companion to the movie. Yep. And a lot of times there's so many times when I finish a movie and I don't really know how to, I feel like we live in such a, a, a weird world of like, oh, we watch a movie and then you're on Letterbox and you're rating it or you you write up your review instantly because everybody wants everything so fast. Um, so I feel like when you watch a movie, sometimes I think a lot of times you come out of it, you don't you don't really know how to feel exactly. And then sometimes I start watching bonus features and I and I begin to it begins to kind of like paint a new picture in my head or a new understanding of the movie. And a lot of times I might come out of a movie like lukewarm and then I watch the bonus features and I'm like, Oh, I never even thought about it in this right. perspective. I mean, even like the fact that now you can go on YouTube and actually watch directors break down certain scenes from their movies on mainstream YouTube channels. One of them was uh, Martin Scorsese breaking down um, scenes from taxi driver and really talking about, Hey, what the scene, I can't remember what the context of the scene was with the scene where he's on the phone and the camera pans away yep. to the hallway and just sits for 30 seconds. And then hearing him break that down and talk about the purpose, the purpose was just like, Hey, how can we increase the anxiety? And, and oh, we're just going to move this over and nothing happens and we're going to move it back. I, I, I didn't, when I watched the movie, I was just like, that's a weird move, but made me feel something. So to hear him break that down, it just, it, 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 it opened my eyes to something new. And now when I watch the movie, I kind of look at it in a little bit of a different way. And that's what right. good bonus features do for me, for the most part. What is your favorite type of bonus feature? Because obviously nowadays we've got audio commentaries, visual essays, written essays, uh, old archival interviews, brand new interviews. We've got uh, location footage uh, where stuff was shot. Mm -hmm. There's a handful of other things, obviously, that you can hand, have on these two, but is there one that always gets you excited more than others? So new documentaries about making of, which Vinegar Syndrome, they do all the time. It's great. When I, when I pick up a release and I see like a new feature length making of, um, I get really, really excited. All your commentaries are such a hit or miss for me because the amount of times I feel like all right, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to rewatch the movie. And sometimes you watch an audio commentary and you're like, that was nothing. I got no you know, information from that whatsoever. So I feel like they're hit or miss to me at least. Um, but yeah, brand new making of, doc and then even documentaries that are, and there's a couple in some of the titles we'll talk about. Um, but even if they can attach a documentary that might not be, might, might not have been made specifically for the film, but it's on a topic of the movie. That's, that's also a really, really like a selling point for me. Hmm interesting um yeah i i think nowadays just 
I, I hate to have this answer, but I, I used to love audio commentaries, but nowadays it is so hard to sit down and listen to a, a two hour bonus feature for a film that I just watched a two hour bonus uh, film of. <laughs> so nowadays, like I, I will happily finish a movie and watch a visual essay or two, especially if they're, mm-hmm. you know, 15 minutes each or something like that, that gives context or additional information. Love that stuff. But uh, everything, everything else on the disc, like commentaries are great, but it takes, it takes a special movie to make me really give that time to it right now. I can't wait to go listen to all these eventually, like when I retire, but no way that's happening anytime soon. That's for sure. I feel like sometimes I go the commentary route. If I want to rewatch a movie, I've seen a bunch of times that I don't really need to um, like fully pay attention to, like I'll throw on a documentary right. for something, or I mean a commentary for something I've seen a thousand times just to give some new context into it. But then again, sometimes you throw on a commentary and you can get to the end and you're like, Okay, I didn't learn a single thing. They weren't even talking about anything that was happening on screen at the moment the whole entire time. And I didn't learn anything new. So like I said, that's why, you know, that's a lot of time to invest to dive into them. Yeah, and I again, I like I've worked on a bunch of commentaries already. They they are they are great informational pieces. Uh I I love listening to them. I just I have not been able to listen to as many as I want recently, unfortunately. Um, but man, visual essays. Visual essays are my jam, and these documentaries that they make are incredible. Uh, I there's been so many documentaries that are even like short form documentaries, like a 15 minute. Here's everything you need to know about this director, leading into here's an hour and a half on a full genre. And we're there's one mm-hmm. of these that the reason I chose this is because a bonus documentary on the disc, and it is such such an incredible thing to watch a film and then immediately go discover everything else uh about it um that that you could ever want to know like these releases are astonishing so the the five i chose tonight specifically are boutique labels uh i I wanted to go uh away from the studio ones there are some great studio releases not saying there aren't but these these are where it gets special for me and then my big thing i don't know if you did the same thing i made the the uh rule for myself that i was not going to choose two from the same label uh, so I had to go mm. back and break that up to see what I really wanted to focus on from each of those labels. Uh, I, I've I've gotten texted multiple times, and uh, my my dear partner Will uh, wants me to say he can't post right now for some reason, but he says he texted me saying, "What the fuck? My commentaries are the best." Uh, that is Will. <laughs> that is exactly Will. Um, yes. <laughs> Well, so when I when I was picking this, because actually for the five are studio releases, one of the things that I was trying to think about were because um, two of these were older. Uh, I guess I guess you could say older releases that really influence me in some you know some crazy way. It's really tough, man, because like when you have like you have a lot more than I do, but I have this wall behind me, yeah. um, and. There's times when like I might pick these five now and then tomorrow morning I might I might be like shit. Like I completely forgot about, you know, even now, like I'm doing I'm watching the Coffin Joe set from Arrow. And, you know, th- those movies, there's like no information right. out on. There's there's no way for them to like, you know, find much new. So each disc is companion, usually with a visual essay. Um, and then one of the discs I just watched had like an hour and 15 minute interview with Steven Thrower that I just threw on and did some dishes, you know what I mean? On, so I I can enjoy a wide variety as long as it's on a topic that I'm interested in. You know what I mean? Totally get it. Uh, yeah. Uh, lots of, lots of comments saying that people rarely listen to them right after watching the movie. Totally get it. I, I can't really do that much anymore, but I used to, I used to try to do it that way. I could just ingest everything all at once. Um, it, it's just a lot. It really is. But if you want a lot, uh, some of these releases will deliver a lot. So let's get into it. What What is uh, your first pick for one of these titles? All right. So I'm going to go, let me pick from my little stack here. <clears throat> so uh, first off, from Vinegar Central, from Sensor, which first of all, this is such an underseen movie, in my opinion. But uh, on here, because, you know, the, the plot of Sensor, it, it, it it, it's around the video nasties in that era, which I, I think most people coming across this movie probably won't have too much knowledge of considering it's a newer film. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but there is, they included the band, the sadist videos 
documentary on this disc, which is such an incredible addition because I have the severed release of House on Straw Hill that has the the DVD on it. And I think in that release, more people, I mean, if you're sitting down and you're watching House on Straw Hill, you probably know what a video nasty is. You probably don't need that. But it's 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 releases like these where yeah there's some there's some behind the scenes but including that in brings a, a whole new understanding of this film and a whole new understanding of the context of what's being shown in here and that's why i was saying including documentaries that are related or relative to the content of the movie is the way to do it because that band the sadist videos documentary is awesome and as somebody who only really started diving into video nasties within the last five years, that documentary has kind of become like a go-to source for me over the last couple of years. So my first pick was, a, uh, yeah, this incredible release of Sensor. Uh, Craig doesn't know what a video nasty is. Craig from Deaf Crocodile, you want to explain what a video nasty is? <laughs> they were, it's kind of hard to explain what a video nasty is. They were, uh, uh, I guess, banned films. Oh, they were absolutely in, banned. And in, in, um, in Europe at a time. And it's funny because when you actually watch them now, because it happened through uh, the eighties. And um, when you watch a lot of them now, they're pretty tamed as to, uh, as to like today's standards, you know what I mean? You watch some of them and you're like, okay, that's, that wasn't as bad as I thought. But the, the, the really crazy thing about the video nasties is there's multiple lists and it's kind of like, you know, the main list is your, your, your extreme ones. And then it kind of gets into, Stuff that I think is a little more tame, and then you have I think section three is pretty much like PG for the most part. It feels like, um, but it's really interesting because it was a pretty big uh, political move for the government at that time. And what's even more interesting was like being a video store owner, and they were still renting these VHS tapes of video uh, band video nasties out from like uh, kind of like a drug deal. You, <laughs> they, they would like take cases or VHS cases of, of films that they were legally allowed to rent out and you'd have to go to the counter and, you know, have some code word or whatever you would say to rent these. And then you would get like raided by whatever the European equivalent of the FBI is. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Crazy Lots era. of people went to jail over this. Yeah. Over renting, uh, you know, over renting out drill or killer. <laughs> Oh, what a good first example to mention too. One you know that's what not I mean? too big of a deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. But then you have like other, like you have Cannibal Holocaust. You know what I mean? So it's a pretty extreme uh, variety uh, of films to go through. But um, it, it is nice now because I think we have access to most of them. There's still some that are making their way out. Um, but for the most part, we, we have access to pretty much all of them, I think, at this point now in some capacity. Yes, uh, I think there's one or two where elements are literally gone, so we will never be able yeah. to get like a good Blu-ray or 4K release. But yeah, you can, you can, I believe you can see all of them now. Uh, but we're yeah. at the point where um, the the information on these is all out there. Obviously, the internet exists. There, there, there's even a couple of I don't know if they're from the banned list, but there's still some stuff that's literally still banned in the UK because of animal issues or what have you. Um, but on yeah. top of all that, uh, I wanted to go back to the release. So, yes, that, that documentary is in there. But for those that are fans of modern physical media, one really cool thing. This is a Vinegar Syndrome release, and they got David Gregory from Severin, who is maybe the biggest fan of Video Nasties, who he's wanted to buy all of them on VHS, and he's gotten really damn close. Um, mm -hmm. He is uh, he's on this disc going over his love for Video Nasties. And what he is able to to share it's good information but the biggest thing is his passion it it is palpable in that in that conversation and uh not to not to uh deflate this release that you're sharing but the funny thing is they didn't even include the whole featurette if you want the whole featurette from from sensor with david gregory and all the other stuff they wanted with it Go get the second site release of Sensor. It has even more bonus features uh, than this one. It is wild what they've been able to do with this film. It gets a lot of love. Uh, please go check it out. Honestly, Sensor wasn't my favorite movie. I thought the ending was kind of eh compared to the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. The bonus features alone, though, for fans of movies and for fans of physical media is mind-blowing and worth it. Absolutely something that everybody who's into this, you should absolutely know 
everything about these titles if you're if you're even remotely interested you, you'll gain a lot of knowledge from them dude and there's so many like um i went on a little like uh what did i i watched like last year off of the video net i, I watched a documentary oh it was um axe i bought the axe and kidnapped co-ed double pack um from severin and i remember watching that and falling in love with that movie a movie that i never would have even you know right I probably heard of if i had not watched the the documentary so it's definitely worth checking and i mean it's super cool to just have that on a solid release so absolutely um i just mentioned second sight so i'm gonna i'm gonna show one from second sight uh this is my pick because this movie i mean we don't have a release of it in the u.s we we maybe never will because of the idiot that controls it um I, I mentioned uh, I, I mentioned the big one earlier, Dawn of the Dead, obviously, but the bigger one for me is George A. Romero's Martin. The fact that we got this in a stupendous 4K release from Second Sight in uh, this glorious package with this giant booklet. You can see how thick that thing is. Um, the special features on this. So we have the original audio commentary by George A. Romero, John Amplis, and Tom Savini. There is another audio commentary by George A. Romero and Richard Rubenstein and Tom Savini, Michael Gornick, and Donald Rubenstein, but also a new commentary with Kat Ellinger, another new audio commentary by Travis Crawford. So this thing has four commentaries. Uh, then on top of that, we have a new feature-length documentary, like you said, uh, mm -hmm. including a location tour for the filming of this. There's a new interview with the composer, Donald Rubenstein, on this, a short film by Tony Bubba on this, and then a Making Martin recounting archival featurette um, that is ridiculous. And then the book, of course, just adds all that more context. This, this release is like a miracle release of sorts because of how long it took to find the elements for this, to get them restored properly, to get it out in a way that everybody was happy with. And it's from a master of horror that if you even, if you half-ass a release from George A. Romero, People will turn on your label, literally. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So yeah. the fact that we got this, and it's something that people still complained about, um, and somehow has been overlooked over the last year, this deserves so much more attention than it got. I know it got overshadowed because Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out mm -hmm. right around it. Which, yes, it's a great release, but you have 412 other releases of Texas Chainsaw to compare it to. This yeah. was the winner from Second Sight from last year for me. I really hope people look at this if you haven't. Um, it's a Romero classic. It's one that's underseen in his catalog, which it's dumb. This movie's amazing and oh, absolutely yeah. deserving of everybody's time. Uh, I could talk about Martin for the next 40 minutes, but I'll get off my soapbox. Dude, I can't believe people, so many people complain that that it didn't have the three hour, the lost cut, you know, of it. I think right. it's what, three hours is supposed Something to be the like Martin that, yeah. cut? Yeah, so many people still had the audacity to complain. Now, I want to ask you, as such a big fan of Martin, would you want the three hour i mean i know i know we would want the three hour cut but would you be interested in watching the full three hour cut of oh, absolutely it? yeah I, okay. I'd, I'd watch right. literally anything to be honest but yeah I, i'd i'd certainly want to see it i'd love to see it restored likely though we never will and to come to terms with that and just say well if we never will let's get everything that we possibly can then we did this release is incredible and uh yeah. when you look at the way that I I think in the description below, I think the way that I explain this is this is our favorite extra packages. When you look at this as a package, the fact that there are four audio commentaries, two of them brand yeah. new, two of them featuring George A. Romero himself, a new visual essay, a new documentary, a giant book, and all of these archival features. What the fuck else could we possibly want for this? Like, there's nothing here to complain yeah. about. Yeah, I don't know how people... I'm skewing away to grab something else to add into the stack, but, um, <laughs> dude. And when you look at, I was just, I was just reading the other day, I picked up a night, the nightmare USA book by Stephen thrower. And nice. one of the first, one of the first couple pages, he had a screen grab from Martin in there. And I looked at the, I couldn't even tell it was from right in the beginning of the train scene. And I'm looking at that photo. I'm like, dude, there's no way this movie looked this bad. Cause I had never seen Martin before I picked up that 4k. Right. So I, I then went on YouTube and I'm looking up clips of like, dude, that, that restoration is incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible, man. Um, so let's see. I saw somebody mention this earlier, so I figured I would do it. I'm going to show off a studio release. And uh, pretty much I think I can sum up 
favorite bonus features by just saying Peter Jackson. Mm. <laughs> because between King Kong and Lord of the Rings, holy shit, does this guy invest so much time into, you know, I, I was thinking about it earlier because I was on a walk earlier with my dog and I was kind of like thinking about this converse, this conversation and thinking about like, um, <clears throat> like trying to, trying to put together in my head um, pretty much how to correlate my thoughts on everything that I wanted to talk about. Yep. And you obviously, you think about all the effort put into the film, but like you look at Peter Jackson releases and you're like, look at the goddamn effort that went into putting together the like right. <laughs> hours. And I think most of the time the bonus features are just as long as his movies. If not longer, which is wild because the yeah. movies are long. Yeah. So I don't, I, I haven't upgraded Lord of the Rings to 4k. I still have the, uh, the Blu-rays and they still have the, I forget what this, the series is called, but each release has two DVD discs just yep. dedicated to <laughs> a making of, but yeah, King Kong, I forget how long, I think it's like three hours, the behind the scenes on this, but it doesn't miss a beat, man. It goes through everything and it's a pretty exhausting experience to like sit there and watch, you know, a standard quality behind the scenes mammoth of a documentary but if you're into film god damn is it insightful man like seriously and especially when you're young if you're young and you're learning about movies you you watch something like that and it it just leaves an impact i mean it, it did on it did on me with it with it with a release i'm going to talk about in a little while king kong is a big one for jackson too because it was it was his passion uh if i remember right i think when he was like eight or nine or 10 or something like that. He made his own King Kong movie and mm -hmm. that set up the, the wonderful story that we were able to see realized in 2005. And so to see somebody that's been passionate about one title for so long, finally make it and then just be able to sit and be giddy explaining everything that happened during that movie, that I, I I'm a big champion of that movie as well, because everybody, uh, you know, I understand going crazy over Lord of the Rings. They're monumental mm. achievements. Can't argue with that. But King Kong being so personal for him, it yeah. that to me was the one that was more interesting to see released. I think, and don't shoot me, but it's it's a wild, it's a wild take for somebody that has done so many different genres and styles of film and innovated so many different, uh, literally just like tools. Literally, what he's done has mm -hmm. changed film forever, and the fact that it's a movie that came out that he loved since he was like barely a child. It's, it's impressive to see that realized so many years later for him. Yeah. And I mean, the effort put in, I, I, I watched it. Um, I don't know about a month or so ago. And I'm like, this holds up so goddamn well. Like I had watched it not long after I watched, uh, what did I watch? I think I watched the first Jurassic world and I was like, I'm pretty sure I pick, all of the CGI in 2005 King Kongs over most right. things, most or King Kong mo over most things that are coming out today. It just holds up, and you can see the love for the source material. Like it's such a such a great movie, man. I love that movie to death. I agree. Uh, I was going to say a different one next, but uh, now that it's been called out in the comments, I kind of want to talk about this one. Let me talk about one of my favorites. Out of the Blue, mm -hmm. uh, this is the Severn release of Out of the Blue. BFI also put this out in the UK. Both of the discs are incredible. You might recognize either one of the arts that Severn did. Uh, this is a 4K disc of a giantly impressive movie uh, directed by Dennis Hopper. Um, this uh, this won a shit ton of awards at last year's Shelf Shock Rewind because this release is so good. Uh, special features on this. We got an aud audio commentary. Uh, that's archival, of course, with Dennis Hopper, uh, with Paul Lewis and the distributor, John Allen Simon. We've got an audio commentary with Kate Ribben, uh, Rennenbaum. It's hard to read. I'm sorry. Uh, Rennenbaum, <laughs> another audio commentary with Kat Ellinger. There is a 40th anniversary 4K restoration U.S. premiere with everybody that was behind this restoration and a theatrical trailer. And that's just on the 4K disc. On the Blu-ray discs, we've got a 19, uh, 1984 Dennis Hopper interview. Uh, remembering Linda Mann's uh, visual essay, there is a video essay by Amanda Reyes and Chris O'Neill that's called Subverting Normality, which is incredible. That won an award last year at the Shelf Shock Rewind Awards. There's a Vancouver on screen and out of the blue called Terminal City Blues. There's a short film by Leonard DeKeer on this. There's a Jack Nicholson radio spot. 
and that's all on one disc. And then there's another disc, uh, remembering out of the blue, 11 new cast and crew interviews, six new interviews with Hopper's friends and colleagues, including Ethan Hawke, Richard Linklater, Philip Mora, and Julian Schnabel. There's Alex Cox recalling out of the blue, Brian Cox on acting and Dennis Hopper, and then uh, AFI Q&A with 4K restoration producers behind this. This release is stacked beyond belief. Uh, it's an incredible film, and it's one of those things that when you see the love that movie this movie is getting 40 years after it came out and was arguably forgotten for many of those years uh this is this is a package that you you sit down with and immerse yourself in after you watch the movie which in itself is powerful and sad and weird and dark and everything about this delivers because the context behind this film is wild dennis hopper obviously is a character so everybody's got crazy stories about hopper but everything about this has been you know touted for the last year and a half so i, I won't say too much more but this this is like an all-timer physical media release in my opinion it, it has literally everything you could ask for on it and on top of that it's a remarkable restoration. The 4k on this is beautiful i saw it on the big screen this last year and mm. Uh, seeing it in a room with uh there was probably 30 other people there i couldn't tell how many had seen it before but uh I, I, i'm thinking it's about half and half and the half that had seen it before you know knowing the emotional beats that were coming you could feel the air get sucked out of the room before those happened but the other thing feeling those emotional beats land for the other half that had never seen it was powerful uh the silence after the movie was over with everybody just going who after that final scene was was one of the best moments I've had in a theater in the last couple of years. Um, this is one of my favorites. Uh, out of the blue, I, I I probably shouldn't say anything else. We'll be here all night. So here's a question. When you sit down, you finish a movie, you're like, all right, I'm going to dive into the bonus features. Do you, um, is, would you, would you, when you, you know, you go to the main menu, you click on, you click on bonus. Do you just go down the line or do you pick and choose and then kind of go from there? It depends on the night and it depends on the disc. If I'm exhausted, yeah. I, I won't be able to do anything, obviously, but if I'm most of the time, and uh, hopefully she's not watching right now, uh, most of the time I'm okay still, and my wife is now asleep, so it's like, well, I may as well just keep watching. We're not doing anything else, so I'll, <laughs> I'll put on a, at least a couple of the visual essays, and then following that, if it's a disc like this, this is like a week-long excursion, because mm -hmm. no matter what you do, I mean, I've got two kids. There's no way I can watch this in one day. This is this is like a four-day event. Um it, it sometimes it gets left in the player for a couple of weeks. Uh, there's sometimes that it, uh, it it will be something that I, I you know, if I got a, a light day of work, which isn't very common, I'll, I'll try to put that on where I can hear something. But it's a uh, it's an excursion, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious because sometimes I sit down to watch bonus features and I'm like, I feel bad skipping around. Other times I don't. Sometimes it's like, it, cause I, I have some pretty bad, uh, like OCD when it comes to wanting to, uh, finish things, you know what yep. I mean? A hundred percent. So I was just curious. Cause I was like, I wonder if anybody else is psychotic. Like I am. When it comes I, to I, I try to be, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. So, um, I actually changed out. I swapped out one of them because <laughs> I couldn't speaking of shell shock and speaking of Severin, if you want to talk about bonus features and packaging and presentation, I don't think in the last couple of years it gets any more loaded than this is a black human will set. Dude, this this release is so overwhelming. I, I don't even know. I bought this um, a, a couple of months ago and I was like, I'm just going to dive in. So I started with the Bible, which is 365 pages, I think. Did you Let's read see. one every day for a year? Yeah, I could. Yeah, it's like 365 <laughs> pages. So I started with this and then I was like, yeah, I'll just go in order. And every single um, disc is just like packed out. Interviews, anything that you could possibly ask for. And especially where I didn't know much about uh, the history of Black Emanuel. Right. Especially for somebody who was like, I'm going to go through this disc by disc and watch this in the order that it's been set up for in here. Um, it's so interesting. And the thing I love about Severin too, is that they're not afraid to put out bonus features that aren't the highest quality per se, because I know there's an interview in here with, um, with a uh, uh, large Emser that's where like the audio is 
it, it got messed up. They explained it in the podcast. Something happened with the audio. The audio got really screwed up. They didn't know until after the interview. Or it's an old interview, and there was just no restoration possibility. Right. Um, but the fact that they still just threw it in there, I learned so much, even if it was in awful, awful quality. <laughs> um, but so overwhelming. I mean, there's 40-plus hours of, of special features in this. Yeah. So if you want to talk about a week long excursion <laughs> this is like a disc a week so yeah. I-, I couldn't pass this one up and talking about bonus features man so like i mentioned with out of the blue i think the black emmanuel box is going to go down as one of the top 10 physical media releases of all time it is it is that level of quality um unfortunately it is a subject that not a lot of people love so i don't think it will ever garner the appreciation and support that it probably should um the the big thing here is the films that are in that box set need like they they crave and desire a lot of context Mm -hmm. thankfully severin is all about that um behind the scenes uh after having worked with them on a couple projects already they are um they are all about uh the the educational aspect not a lot of like jokes they don't want uh you know if you were going to do a commentary for cemetery man they don't want you to be yucking it up the whole time or anything this is something mm-hmm. where they, they want you to respect these releases and um some of the features on the set uh that i've started to dabble into it's it's impressive what they've got it's impressive the the amount of time and energy that went into it and even just saying 40 plus hours of special features sure that sounds like a lot you still don't get it until you pop one in and actually see how much went into it you do not get what is actually on these discs until you are in there and let it wash over you. It is crazy. And you got to think too, 90% of it is brand new. Like there's not a lot of old stuff right. out about these movies. There's, there's not. So you watch these visual essays and it's absolutely insane. The amount of work that just goes, even the book, like the book is incredible. Uh, it, it, it's insane. And yeah, there is, I just saw Celeste mentioned like the animal vibe, the, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff, it, it's all about like, I, I, to me, I'm a big fan of kind of a Holocaust and I know not a ton of people are, and I'm very happy that there is a PETA cutout that allows me to watch that movie without the other stuff. Um, and I get that that was a trend in Italian horror, which is why I tend to not love cannibal Farrah or Ferox. Pharaoh, yeah. I forget which way. Yeah, which way it said. Wh- why I don't appreciate that one, um, like I do ha- uh, Holocaust, because um, when I was young and I first watched Cannibal Holocaust, it had. I think I got it off like LimeWire or sort of, like it was like Pirates, or it was like one of the you know, <laughs> one of those. And it was perfectly fitting for that movie because it felt like something that I illegally downloaded on the internet. Um, <laughs> But I remember watching it and not feeling like I was obviously upset about what's happening on screen to animals. I'm an animal lover. I have my dog tattooed on me, you know. Yeah. Um, but the the when you look at like, oh, they were actually filming in, <laughs> you know, the Amazon and the animal killings weren't out of like a cruelty. It was out of food and they just happened to film it and add it in and make it part of the whole entire um, experience. It, it does make it different for me. And there are times when it's senseless that I don't agree with, but I also understand that at that time there's, you know, that was, that was a thing. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I don't have to enjoy that part, but everything else I can, you know, I could try to enjoy. Yeah. And that's, there's stuff about the, the, uh, animal violence and some of the extras as well. So there's, there's literally, yeah everything that you can want in this box set it is it is intense and then um severin is great with their soundtrack cd severin is great with um shorts when they can get them it, that doesn't happen as often but they do get them severin's another one that they they will go out of their <coughs> excuse me out of their way to get brand new interviews that are mind-blowing like the fact that we the the black friday slate from them that we got all these michaela suave titles with brand new interviews with like everyone imaginable <laughs> is shocking it is it is a masterpiece from them i every time that severin puts something out like that it is impressive and their box sets like i i i look at their box sets as the bible on whatever subject it is so Mm -hmm. i I really hope every 
every label out there pays attention to what they're doing and tries to live up to those standards because yeah yeah and i love the crossover too like uh, i feel like a lot of people uh you know you look at all the labels and some people think competition they think this but um you have on their february releases hotspur and the scavengers or i think it was hotspur you have um uh, what's his name from Vinegar Syndrome is on the commentary. Joe Rubin. Yeah. Um, for that, yeah, Joe Rubin's on it. Um, you know, obviously, we just talked about David Gregory on a Vinegar Syndrome release. Um, so there's a lot. There's a lot of really good crossover. And the thing with Severin that I appreciate, and they got an interview. Um, they get, didn't they get an interview for Burial Ground with uh, what's his name? Yeah. Um, he he was. I know. I think it helped. Uh, 88 Films kind of like helped make that happen for them. But it was like one of the first things he's ever done for that film in a yep. long long time same so, with the uh, like, for cemetery man they got rupert everett for the first time and in, in, in for like forever on that movie yeah yeah they talked about how difficult it was to to get him in the in the podcast before the release came out so that was one of the first bonus features i jumped to after i watched that uh, cemetery man so that was an awesome one well uh you mentioned vinegar syndrome so i should jump probably to my pick from them and uh, anybody that's been watching Vinegar Syndrome for years, if you hear we're talking about great extras packages, I really hope you go to this one in your mind first because this movie is not great. But uh, the extras package in this is better than great. It's better than the movie. Um, I need to take it out of this little protector thing so I can read the back of it because there's so much on it. However, uh, my pick from Vinegar Syndrome is Spookies. Uh, the Spookies release from Vinegar Syndrome is so damn good so this is uh first off a brand new 4k restoration there is a feature length making of documentary including a commentary track with uh documentary co-directors on this michael gingold and glenn baisley then the bigger thing for me vipco the untold story this is another feature length documentary on the notorious uk home video label including extended interviews footage with michael lee who is the founder of vipco and a trailer um, those are like, those are the shining stars of this release. But then on top of that, you also have a 2015 Alamo draft house screening introductions with Spooky's director. You got a Q and a from a 2015 Hudson horror show screening. Um, you've got, uh, archival locations featurette, pin reel outtakes and bloopers behind the scenes, still gallery trailer, everything like this release is, this is like what put vinegar syndrome on the map for a lot of people is stuff that felt like this. Everything they could find, they put it together. They made um, incredible documentaries. They got in contact with everybody for a film that a lot of people either A, had never heard of, or B, saw once or twice like in the 90s and then forgot about it for 15 years. And you see it announced and you go, holy shit, that's that one. I saw that one time. And you go look and you go, oh my God, this like, I people not only know this movie, they love it and will put mm -hmm. hours of bonus features on a release like Spookies. And then you watch the movie and you're like, wait, these are farting zombies. <laughs> why, <laughs> why do we have three and a half hours of documentaries and all of the special <laughs> features ever? And it's because it's films like these that set the future for our filmmakers, no matter who. It, it's most of the people that we love in films that are in blockbuster movies started in low budget films like this. This movie... Mm -hmm is is an example of that it's an incredible feature it's it's a good movie with great practical effects it's it's not the highest quality but this release is if you are if you're trying to get into vinegar syndrome this is one of the first ones that i would say i i don't understand how you love and appreciate vinegar syndrome without a release like this uh at least because it it is like the the quintessential type of title that they were putting out for many years and then on top of that every special feature under the sun. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Spooky's amazing. So fun fact, before I started my YouTube channel, I was on a, uh, a little podcast and we got to interview Frank Farrell, the producer for that. And most notoriously nice. street trash. So we got to interview him and he invited us out. We didn't end up going, but he invited us out to New York where they were doing a uh, screening of Spookies. And then they were also going to do a screening right after of the making of documentary mm. for it. And he was telling us during that interview that they did it once before in, I think it was LA and he's, it was a sold out show packed. Like they had people sitting in the aisles, like in the fire yeah. exits watching the film. And it was at that moment I was like, Oh yeah, this movie's got a massive fan base and that's a beautiful release. Beautiful release. 
It's a great, great, yeah. great title. Um, the slip uh, did sell out for everybody that's asking. The slip sold out years ago. I, I that title came out in like 2019 or 2020, something like that. Uh, this one is a little, little on the older side, especially for everybody that got into Vinegar Syndrome in the pandemic and in their mainstream heyday. Uh, but yeah, this is a, it's a good, good title to go back to, especially during a sale. They got a, a halfway to Black Friday sale coming up. Check that out if you haven't. Yeah. So I'm going to continue the trend of talking about one particular bonus feature on a release. And I'm going to give Studio again. And I can't even explain how much this feature meant to me. So I have it in a multi-pack set. But more specifically, I'm talking about Final Destination 2. Right? <laughs> nice. So hold on. <laughs> so there is, there is a 36-minute feature on the Final Destination 2 disc. And I think it's called Bits and Pieces. And it's advertised as the like behind the scenes of the kills, like just about the visual effects mixed with the practical effects and stuff. But I was, Final Destination 2 came out, what, 2003 ish, right? Somewhere 2002, like that, yeah. 2003. So I was 13 years old. Um, that was the documentary or the little bonus feature that introduced me to Herschel Gordon Lewis. Because <laughs> the, dude, they do this really cool thing where the first half of the feature is just the history of gore in yep. film. And it starts by talking about uh, the Grand Guignol Theater. You, they have interview with Herschel Gordon Lewis in that yep. little bonus feature. Um, and I mean, it's there are still movies that I find today that I watch that are, have clips in that little bonus feature that I'm like, oh, that's what that's from. Most notoriously for me, it was when Screen Factory put out Alone in the Dark. And it's the scene when, uh, what's his name, has the Jason-ish mask on and yep. he rips out the guy's throat with the, what's that, three-tongue gardening tool yeah. thing with. Um, I was like, oh, shit, that's from the Final Destination 2 36-minute bonus feature. <laughs> oh, but, that's amazing. <laughs> with the announcement of the new final destination bloodlines god i hate that title um i went back and i'm kind of like re-watching these and when i threw on final destination 2 i was like please have this bonus feature please have this bonus feature and i re-watched it and yeah dude that was such a gateway little thing and i think i watched that more than the movie sometimes um because i appreciate that i appreciate right. the that that history, the effort that went into putting that together, and still to this day, I'm I'm kind of shocked that we don't really have like a full blown documentary on the history of kind of gore and practical effects in in film, especially with like I, I have I have 15 hours of documentaries about just 80s horror behind me. I cannot believe there's not a documentary about um, about like the Grand Guignol and all that stuff. I I think there is part of the Herschel Gordon Lewis. Set, I right godfather of gore it, yeah. yeah i think that's part of it but yeah that's just one of those features man that i i still love to this day you know 20 plus years later um I, i'm gonna geek out for a second because this is a great pick um i i i want to shout out right now uh literally all of the final destination discs and all of the saw franchise discs specifically on dvd if you want some of the best mainstream special features ever put to disc that isn't like an art house commentary i understand those are great i'm not we're, we're talking about a different thing right now but uh, come back in two minutes um all of those final destination titles and all of these saw titles have literally some of the best examples of behind the scenes of like q a with the actors of the things that they went through of how they got specific shots um but really shout out right now to final destination three specifically on dvd if you've never checked it out they have a bonus feature on that DVD that is uh, like basically a choose your own adventure. These people are up against it and the, um, the the kills are about to happen and you get to choose if they live or die. And I, if I remember right, if you choose if everybody lives, it's really funny because it takes this like 85 minute movie and it ends up being like 21 minutes long. It's like <laughs> nothing. But the fact that they put all of this into the DVDs, um, I, I'm still waiting for the day that they re-release in like a uh, saw will probably never end. But if, if we get like a, a giant saw 4k box set someday and they port all of those DVD features over, that's when I will buy the studio release of these things because 
they skip the blu-ray generation and we don't mm. need that those old like the the see-through saw dvd cases <clears throat> that's where all of the incredible film uh you like the conjecture behind the scenes about how they made these movies that's where it was all found they put them on blu-ray and they said fuck it we need to save them a little bit of money and now we get nothing and i hate that but you're so right. Those Final Destination uh, DVDs on all the kills, the behind-the-scenes stuff, the outtakes in those movies, mm -hmm. it is such a perfect snapshot in time of how you make one of those types of movies. I, yeah, incredible pick. Incredible pick. Well, I think, too, doesn't Final Destination 3, I don't know if it's on this disc, but I remember um, the DVD had like a 90-minute making of documentary as well. I'm pretty sure the Final Destination 3 one had a pretty comprehensive... Yeah. Um, behind the scenes, but remember the days of because I think they did it on the Final Destination three disc. Remember the days of like I, I can't remember a specific example, but uh, the um, when you would we, the the menu would start up and you would have to like pick a side before it brought you to a menu. It'd be like pick good or evil, and it would bring yep. you to a uh, just a different looking menu with really nothing you know nothing else. But those those were the days to be alive, man. Uh, not to not to schlock my own stuff that you can purchase, but one of the uh, issues of the Physical Media Advocate, there is a wonderfully written article uh, by uh, Jason, who is the owner of Not Quite Reality, a new found footage label out there. Uh, but he wrote he wrote a full article about the art of DVD menus specifically because DVD menus were amazing. I mean, the mm -hmm. how many of us, uh, you know, when you were younger and you watched um, Shrek. And you heard after four minutes, fucking Eddie Murphy go play the movie. Yeah, play <laughs> like the amount of times that that went through. There was, oh God, I, one of the Kevin Smith movies. If you let it sit on the menu for 10 minutes, something happened and they started like cussing you out or something. Um, if I remember right, uh, the, the devil's rejects DVD went through like all kinds of not safe for work type of photos and imagery and stuff. But some of those discs, man. They they put everything into those DVD menus, and we have lost that on the Blu-ray and the 4K generation. And God, I hope that comes back at some point because it is oh. it is one of those things that shows the care and extra artistry behind these. Yes, it costs some money. I understand some of these smaller boutiques cannot pull out of it, but uh, it is so damn good that they 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 would put that much time and energy into it. I, I loved all of those. Does it bother you the new style of, of main menu where it'll pop up and then on the right it'll be playing like uh like preview <laughs> clips of the bonus features? Cause that drives me yeah absolutely insane. I hate that menu style. Oh man, I love I love how I mentioned <laughs> Eddie Murphy voice and the comment goes wild. <laughs> uh, God, that's funny. My my Arnold voice is but to be fair in that menu he didn't sound like Eddie Murphy he was trying to do like a weird accent. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, okay, I've got two left. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, kind of a fun pick since the rest of mine were kind of like analytical and crazy. Um, if you just want to see, <laughs> I've had like seven. That's what she said said about me tonight. So I'm gonna go for another one. If you want to see a really impressive package, um, check out. <laughs> The Scream Factory release of Big Trouble in Little China. This is going out of print right now, but this is one of those discs. The collector's edition of this is two discs, and it is, it's Scream Factory. So the fact that they had to include the words and much more at the end of it because they literally couldn't type everything is so damn impressive for Scream Factory. So... Disc one, we have a new audio commentary with the producer, Larry J. Franco. New audio commentary with Steve Johnson, who did the special effects. We have the classic commentary on here with uh, John Carpenter and Kurt Russell. Literally just two bros hanging out. It's not analytical. It's just them hanging out. And it's it's so weird to listen to that. Um, isolated score, theatrical trailers, TV spots, vintage interviews. That's disc one. Disc two. New interviews with a whole bunch of people from the film, including James effing Hong. They got James Hong with a new interview on this. Um, on top of that, interviews with John Carpenter, Kurt Russell, the cinematographer, Dean Cundy, and everybody else that are all archival. Uh, vintage featurettes, deleted scenes, music videos, gag reels. This has everything you could ever want for Big Trouble in Little China, except for 4K. And now that it's going out of print from Scream Factory... I kind of think the studio is probably going to do the 4K of this, and that means we probably will not get all of these features again on a release. So um, 
I know it's going out of print. I'm not trying to tempt people, but if you want an incredible release of Big Trouble in Little China, obviously the slipcover is long sold out. The Scream Factory release of Big Trouble is a gigantic, immensely impressive, just wonderful set of, of bonus features. Dude, the first of all, disc two of that release has the smallest font I have ever seen on a main menu ever. Like, there's so it's many interviews, bad. and it just keeps going, dude. There is so many on that yeah. disc. It is. It. I, I'm really afraid that with the 4K that we're gonna get like an a, a, like a Escape from LA situation where it's just nothing on it and the transfer is not great. So. Yeah. And they'll really screw up the audio like they did uh, Escape from L.A. Yeah, and then it'll become one of those weird Walmart ones that's in a DVD case that gives you oh, every... Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, what, a, what a weird way to do it. So I'm going to top it off with another uh, One Last Studio one. And it's, <clears throat> again, impact it had on me at the time that it came out. And I, I really want to give it too much. I gave Peter Jackson credit for the behind the scenes. I really want to give fair credit to Rob Zombie for his earlier releases and the making of documentaries of them. Specifically, I have here, this is fun. I have the, the trilogy, right? The Firefly trilogy. But in here, I actually have a loose disc that I'm trying to, to keep safe. The DVD disc for what was this called? 30 days in hell. And I'm pretty sure this is, how long is this? Like four hours, yep. I think, of just the making of Devil's Rejects. And it goes over, again, everything. Like there's like 15 minutes of this dedicated to how they laid out the guts in the scene after the girl gets hit by the truck. Like just so much. And same with um, Halloween. I actually have a different um, copy, a standalone copy of Halloween just for like the three and a half hour yeah. making of documentary. I mean, like it 31, I think that one's like a, almost two hours or over two hours. Um, those are whole other productions in itself to have a crew yep. assemble everything, follow the team around. And it's crazy too, that like Rob Zombie, say what you want about, yeah, four and a half hours for the Halloween documentary it's like twice the length of the actual film yeah yeah that's that's insane but all the information that you could possibly that you could possibly ask for and i i, I have a feeling that um these like those are relics companies they're not studios are not going to let people do that anymore you know what i mean you're lucky if you yeah. get like nine minutes now ten minutes now um most of the time when i get a new release and um and I, I see like, oh, making of, and I click on it and it's six minutes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they told me, not, it, it's just more of like an advertise, like it's- Literally, yeah. Yeah, it's just them, you know, discussing it. So I, I, I'm really like sad to say that outside of boutiques, we're probably never going to get that kind of stuff, you know, again. It's kind of like poor things. Like I wish, I really wish somebody was like, hey, we're going to, we're going to give this, uh, this, um, we're gonna we're gonna have a crew come in so you guys can film an hour and a half long documentary on just the costume design or the production yeah. design of poor things, but nobody will ever do that. Hopefully, one day we get a good era release like like they did with the lighthouse um, that can really make a finally good behind the scenes content for it. So that's that's my last pick because that was my favorite of the bunch. Yeah, I think uh, I think when I recently interviewed Joe Lynch, I think we discussed a little bit about how. Um, his earlier features, he used to put a lot of love into the commentary. He he did as much as he possibly could. And then just now when he was doing Suitable Flesh, there, there was a change because those earlier budgets had literal budgets set aside for bonus features. And this one mm -hmm. had nothing. And so he went out and did everything on his own. He wanted to make sure that the physical release of that had something. And it, it ended up a, a really, really great addition to the disc. And I'm so glad there's people like him still pushing for that. And that's where... I, I really hope somebody like a Christopher Nolan or like a Guillermo del Toro or an Edgar Wright, who are probably the three biggest directors out there pushing physical mm -hmm. media in terms of when something gets announced or there's a problem, they're all over it. I mean, we've gotten big quotes from Christopher Nolan and Guillermo del Toro in the last year of your, 
you're the arbiter of these films for future generations. Uh, physical media is like a uh, Fahrenheit 451 level of losing information and all this sort of things. I'm really hoping that they start to champion including physical releases in their contracts for films. There's no mm -hmm. reason we shouldn't have that because otherwise, like poor things, getting barely getting a Blu-ray or all of us strangers seemingly not going to get any physical release in the U.S. If somebody is a big enough filmmaker and puts that in their contract, it might wake some of these studios up. We really need somebody to advocate on that level, and, and I hope somebody pulls through for us. Well, Oppenheimer was definitely like a pick that I had in mind because of the hour, I think it's like an hour and 10 minutes or whatever. I, I, I appreciated yeah. that behind the scenes much more. And the thing that I was happy about was when I bought Oppenheimer, it had the, um, the sticker on it that said like two or three hours of bonus features included, which I thought was the coolest thing because that used to be such a selling point and you never see anybody advertising the bonus features anymore. So I still right. greatly appreciate that they're, that they're trying because that, that that is a good look at um, like I didn't know that the anxiety attacks in Oppenheimer were practical. Yep, had no idea until I watched that. So a whole new appreciation for little things like that. I just want to say, Dylan Smithy, I see your comment and I find it hilarious. Uh, he <laughs> says, I, "I want a Disneyized version of a behind the scenes video of Werner Herzog and Klaus Kinski having a happy friendship." Uh, <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, Siminer says between Oppenheimer and now the Cameron films being overwhelmed with orders, Disney and Universal need to wake up and smell the profit. Uh, I mean, honestly, from what I've heard, I've had two different insiders that I've talked to that have said the Oppenheimer thing really made a big impact last year. And if I believe uh, Bill Hunt over at the Digital Bits said 25,000 copies went to Amazon and 25,000 went to all other retailers in the U S and by that came out on Tuesday. And I think it was by Thursday, pretty much you couldn't find a copy of it online to buy. And all of the stores where people wanted them were gone. Of course you could go to BFE Idaho and find a copy or some, some random shop like a Walmart in Mississippi or something probably had some, but in a lot of places where people were doing this, they were all sold out. And so Supposedly, from what I'm hearing, it made a giant impact and not just on Universal, but a couple other studios noticed. And it's supposedly changing some things in the future. And I'm I'm very curious to see what that means. Obviously, it's it's like turning a ship. It'll take a little while. I get that. But I hope there are lasting effects for that that we can we can really feel for the next couple of years. Yeah, that was it took me till I think I found it the Saturday after release at a random Walmart. Um, and it was the last one. Um, and I think up until, up until not longer, right. It was still the number one selling disc for a long time. Right. Yeah. It absolutely yeah, that's... was. It sold incredibly yeah. over, since then. And it's, I mean, to sell 50,000 copies in the first seven days is impressive for a studio title. And then to be in the top three releases following that, and then to win the Oscar, which no doubt made that, uh, uptick even higher again. Yeah. That's insane. That's what a win, man. I, uh, I'm impressed. Uh, and it's it's a good title, so can't argue with it. Uh, my last one, um, noticeably absent in my four picks so far, is one that you've mentioned a handful of times tonight. And so I, I looked back at what was my first boutique Blu-ray, not, not boutique anything, but first boutique title that made me start collecting all of this years ago, and that happened to be an Arrow title. And so I was looking through my Arrow collection and thought, which one of these did I last go through in full and was impressed not only with all of the archival stuff, but with the amount of new things. And on top of that, the, the disc itself looks immense. Uh, and I had to go with the 4k release of Dario Argento's deep red. And this set, um, first off is, is beautiful to behold for what it is. I mean, it's a classic film, one that's been loved for a long time. It looks way better than ever. And then on top of that, New 4K restoration of both the 127-minute Italian version and the 105-minute export version on different discs. Uh, then on top of that, it's got uh, you know the, the booklet, it's got the art cards, got all that fun stuff, but the extras. So we have a new audio commentary by Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson, who are always top-notch. You've got an archival audio commentary by uh, Thomas Rostock, who's an Argento expert. You have three hours of new interviews with members of the cast and crew, including Argento himself, which 
come on like that's incredible uh and then mm -hmm. on top of that there's a whole bunch of archival footage there is um some other interviews on here there is arrow uh transfer trailers there's uh arrow video 2018 trailer image galleries and then that second disc they've got even more archival stuff there's an archival introduction to the film by claudio simonetti of goblin uh there's an archival visual essay by michael mckenzie featuring an in-depth appreciation of deep red there's interviews with uh argento dario nicolotti claudio simonetti and uh the argento collaborator luigi cozzi all on that second disc this box altogether is is one of the most impressive things the Arrow has put out because it's it's kind of like what Second Sight did with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I think this one is even a little more impressive. It is a it's a release that's gotten quite a few physical media releases, taken up to the highest quality possible, and then loaded with all kinds of new footage that we we never expected. Um, the way that we got Texas Chainsaw Massacre, sure, there's like five commentaries on it, and there's a giant book and all that stuff. But that movie's been exploited to hell. This movie mm. deserves a little more discourse on it. And I am I'm impressed, so impressed that they were able to get everything on on this. Uh it's a beautiful set, beautiful release. Arrow has killed it with these Argento 4K titles that they've done. And I, I don't think it'll ever be topped. It's it's gorgeous. And Deep Red is such a I feel like I feel like when it comes to Argento, nobody really talks about it. I know when I bought I have the just the US cover art of that 4K release. Um that was a I had seen Bird with the Crystal Plumage, but I was still learning um kind of like uh, earlier Argento. And after watching Deep Red, I was like, holy shit, how would I never because before that I was a typical like Suspiria is his best film uh person. Now Suspiria is like number three or four same for me so yeah deep red is a crazy film and actually funny enough uh the arrow release of bird with the crystal plumage was the first video essay i ever watched and that's what got me to fall in love with video essays believe it or not wow yeah yeah, yeah. man i uh <laughs> I, I was worried that talking about these tonight we wouldn't have enough to talk about but the the amount that we've pumped out of 10 titles like Again, that's only 10 titles. And tonight we covered 40 announcements. Uh, and <laughs> every every single week across the, the board for boutique and studio stuff, there's there's gonna be more than a thousand titles released on physical media over this next year. And that's that's even just the like the English speaking releases. I generally don't cover all of the German stuff or the French titles. Uh there's there's so much more than that. And to see that uh <laughs> Before I go down that sentence, let me let me start another sentence first. Uh, I had somebody ask me a question this week, and I, I looked up something and tried to get a rough estimate. And the way that I counted, I think I counted around 145 active boutique labels in the world right now. Something like that. And there's probably more, because there's some that do like one or two a year. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's rough. When you're when you're trying to keep track of all those but yeah something like 145 active boutique labels and only like 90 percent of those are ocn partner labels but um that was a joke uh <laughs> when you're looking at that many titles coming out and that many companies that are wanting to sell things so they're going to put their all into a lot of those releases sure not all of them we can see some some put more effort than others that's a lot of extras that's a lot of interviews that's a lot of visual essays that's a lot of commentaries i get it but man, the 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 information that you get out of these is so much worth your time. That if you have not taken that time recently, fully fully endorse it. Uh, there, there's a couple things I want to point out. I understand that like accessibility can be an issue. I know that many of them are not subtitled, and for those that are deaf or hard of hearing, uh, not only is that hard to ingest a full release, it's also really expensive. When really all you're doing is buying the film that's subtitled. So uh, I understand that 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 can be rough, but um, on top of all that, there's a lot of people that just don't have the time. Uh, I, I'm one of those people lately. I've, I've not been able to watch as much as I want to. Two young kids and like four full-time jobs, it feels like. Um, but the the titles that are out there that are good, that people are praising, pay attention. The special features are good. The special features are worth it. The special features that uh, are being praised are praised for a reason. They are They are new scholarly documents on films that in many instances never had them before. So uh, keep an eye on those. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to the smaller labels like Mondo Macabro, who are incredibly consistent at putting all of their effort into a title. Um, places like Indicator that are 
filling up the entire back cover of every single release they do because they got all of the special features. And then on top of that, uh, you know, even Kino, they, they don't do a lot of new stuff, but when they do, they, they still work out all of their releases, getting a commentary for the most part. And even then they're put, they're putting more effort. These Kino cult titles are incredible. This release of Crybaby by, by uh, John Waters is getting crazy. It, it's getting really good. Uh, th there's a lot of new stuff on there. I'm impressed. Um, yeah, I, I could talk about bonus features my entire life probably. So I, I will shut up and let yeah. you, uh, put a cap on it. Well, it's just, it's, it's a challenge, man. When I, when I was trying to like figure out what I wanted this year to be for, for my YouTube channel, I, I try not to think of things as like, um, content creator because I don't really like that phrase, you know? Right. Um, I try to think of it as like everything I do, everything I deep dive into or that I talk about, I'm, I'm, I'm investing into my own personal education and YouTube is just a platform for me to yep. haphazardly spit that information out and hope that 25 people watch it. You know what I mean? So like my investment into Severin and in, in behind me, I have a, a ton of different labels that I, that I collect and I watch and, and that I appreciate if it, if I didn't appreciate it, it wouldn't be on the shelf. You know, I wouldn't put my hard earned money into it. Um, my investment into Severin really came around when I started listening to the podcast, their companion podcast and hearing the effort and getting the consistent, like that consistent quality is, it is also nice that I can just buy a bundle of movies and they all show up, you know, one time that's, that's, that's convenience. Um, but the thing I'm finding is like just that investment. And I feel like <clears throat> as a film lover, even if I'm watching something I've never heard of a complete blind spot, I feel like I'm being given a, a, a presentation done by people who love and appreciate what I love and appreciate about it. Right. And it feels like, it feels like, um, you know, when you, for me to be even come on this podcast and to talk with you about movies, I feel like it's a, it's a rare thing to talk to people who, love the same exact thing that you do and have the same exact appreciation. Um, you know, I'm looking at my two first indicator titles that I picked up. And the first thing that I noticed was like, we're all cardboard collectors. You know, we, we do, we do, uh, you know, uh, that's what she said. Again, we do appreciate a nice package. <laughs> I do. Um, you know, so I, I look at the presentation, but then I look at the bonus features and I just, I'm like, dude, this is great. Like I know nothing about these and I'm going to walk away from these knowing, as much as you know as much as i possibly can and that's what i appreciate most and it's not that i ever want to it's not that i ever want to talk down on labels that maybe don't invest in the bonus features as much just my uh investment into them without really kind of realizing it, it doesn't appear as as much because i i, I just want information i'm not going to remember all of it right but I just want information like a recent release not didn't come out yet, but um, Cauldron Films doing the Houses of Doom. Yeah. Like, dude, that that set, we haven't even seen, you know, a, a real package. We just have the the art makeup of everything. Um, but if you're an Italian horror fan, like that, that is easily worth the ninety five dollars or asking for the pre-order price. What they're jamming into that thing looks incredible. And that's one of the sets that I'm going to dive headfirst into it's not even going to make it to the shelf so i'm so i'm 100 through <laughs> you know what i mean uh this black man well set this is so intimidating but but so worth you know the years i'm probably going to spend <laughs> uh getting into that um it's it's one of those things i don't really know how to put my love for it into words it's when i have it in my hand and i have a giant smile on my face that I, uh, I realize what this stuff does for me and, and many other people like me, you know what I mean? Well said, um, to, to, to put a cap on that, I know you made the joke about us being cardboard collectors, but, um, I, I think tonight is a really great discussion to really, uh, highlight primarily that we are buying these for the discs. Um, mm -hmm. obviously there's always conversation about, slip covers and you know why hard boxes are out there when we don't need them and all this other stuff um all that leads back to like the the conversation on limited editions and all that other fun stuff that comes with it um i get it i get the appeal behind them 
Hell, I've got literally every single vinegar syndrome slip cover that's ever been made. Do I need them? No, absolutely not. I love having them. Um, however, these discs are where they're at. Uh, the reason that we should be collecting these is to absorb what's on these discs, to appreciate the films, mm -hmm. to appreciate uh, one thing that I didn't spend enough time talking about tonight, the love for short films. Uh, in fact, shout out who's uh, in the chat tonight, Def Crocodile, for, for everything that they do. They try to get as many short films as they possibly can. Even I know I put out an interview, so I've talked about it a lot, but the tune. Their Bill Plimpton disc that they just put out, multiple short films, commentary, interviews, everything that you could possibly ask for for this film. And you've got just an array of context behind literally one of the greatest illustrators in the history of, of art. Like he is, is a gift. And when you're looking at something like this, those short films go a long way. You're not going to find those on physical media generally. You're going to find stuff like, um, I don't know the, the the cheap interviews or deleted scenes that when you pop it in and you watch them in total, it's like ten minutes. Uh, but mm -hmm. so when when you see somebody like Def Crocodile who's bending over backwards to load their discs and make them absolutely worth every penny you're spending on them, I, I can't help but respect them. But also, it feels so much better to support them because your money is going so much further. Yeah, yeah, and that's dude. That's such a huge thing. There, there are. Um, many labels that I, I might not collect. They might not have something I'm interested in, but I have immense respect for just because I see and I hear of the quality and I don't have to have them, you know, obviously buying them as a form of respect, but if there's, if there's something I'm not interested in, it's really hard to put money towards it. Um, right. But I can still sit back and, and greatly appreciate, you know, what companies are doing and what they're putting in. And I think from here, it's only going to be up. Everybody keeps talking about, Oh, physical media is dying or whatever. And I think that's, I, I don't think that could be any more, any more wrong. You know what I mean? I think that we're in uh, the heyday for information. I mean, dude, just go on Amazon and type in um, like horror movie books. And there are so many, but I mean, I just bought a 500 page book about Lucio Fulci. I have another 300 page book. That's part two of a Jess Franco series. Yeah. See, like we're in the heyday of information, man. And it's all out there as long as we're willing to listen to it. If I retain 1% of it, I'm happy, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's a lot to remember. It's a lot of context. It's a lot of things that if you're, if you're literally trying to research for a bigger project or idea or something, these discs are exactly where it's at. It's a, uh, it's a gift, man. I, I, I just appreciate it. This has been a fun conversation. Dude, and, and there's times, man, when I do like my Severin showcase and it's been 24 hours since I watched a disc I'm going to talk about. And sometimes I'm like, I sit here and I'm like, I don't remember. <laughs> like, I can't put together half of what I heard because there's just so much information. But this is like this conversation when we were talking about ideas, I was hoping that this would that this would work out, like talking about bonus features. But this has been uh, the coolest thing, dude. I'm I'm so stoked that we did this. Yeah, this is one of the special ones. Um, I, I think we picked ten excellent titles, and not to mention, I think we alluded to like ten more probably through talking probably. about all these. <laughs> um, the, if you pick up literally all of the ones, not not the announcements, but just what we talked about in the extras packages tonight, um, I, I think this is one that you could have like two months worth of watching just through those discs and just it's like 15 20 discs that's nothing um yeah th this has been epic uh anything else coming up on your channel you want to turn everybody on to or a recent video or anything you want to highlight um so um as far i mean i did just put out the seven showcase for february i'm going to be putting out the march one as soon as i get those releases i ordered them pretty quick so i should be getting those um you know, hopefully by like before the 10th of April, this, this month was a stacked month for them, for their releases. So I'm hoping it doesn't take me forever to dive into those. Um, but as far as what's coming, I mean, I'm still going to continue my inside the mind of coffin Joe. I'm actually going to be doing um, starting in August. I'm preparing to do like a uh, deep dive into the all haunts BRs box set. Um, so just a lot more deep dive stuff. And I'm also working on, um, putting together some sort of series about, um, just like practical effects and practical gore effects. It's something that I, that I've been wanting to bring, 
put together for a long time that I feel like um, I need to figure out exactly how I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to call the series practically and I'm just going to deep dive in. I'm trying to figure out a way to get through YouTube censorship with that. Cause you know, they're a pain in the ass, but I'm working on that. So that'll come eventually. So other than that, man, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. Same here. Uh, like I said, all of the uh, issues of the Physical Media Advocate are available in physical now. You can get that at the link in the description below. If you love conversations like this about extras, about films, about everything else, um, you might be interested in the Patreon. Check out the Patreon at the link below. We have a uh, Discord where we are talking about this shit literally 24-7. Um, since, since we went live, I've had like... 40 messages pop up of people talking about stuff in the discord uh tonight so it's it's a really fun place with like-minded people and there's something about joining a community that discusses this type of thing so that you feel validated in your love for these things that really help uh i i strongly suggest it uh, you know not even just for the supporting the channel aspect but it's there's something about this community that's just special and i i appreciate everybody taking part in this um other than that, uh, like I mentioned last week, uh, this coming Monday, I've got an interview coming up with Jim O'Hare from Parks and Rec that uh, happened right here in this room, and uh, it's it's a really fun one. Uh, if you have laughed at Jeremy being on my channel multiple times before, um, a big portion of the interview, we just spend time just completely just insulting Jeremy. He wasn't here. We just wanted to talk shit about him. Uh, beyond that, um, I've got already like my next five or six interviews already done and ready to go up. So it's going to be a pretty incredible month of interviews on the channel. And, uh, I I'm eager to see what, uh, you all respond to next and, uh, next Thursday, I I'll shout out the guests since it's in the physical media advocate, uh, John Daly, who is, uh, editing all of the trailers for Terravision. He goes by rock Chudson on Twitter and Instagram. A lot of people have seen that name going on. He's going to be our guest next week, and it's uh, it's going to be a fun conversation. Um, the the discussion we're having next week is going to be an interesting one that I think everybody's going to have different answers for. So if that's not enough of a teaser, uh, check back next Thursday to see what we're talking about. And uh, last I'll say, Chris, you did excellent. Thanks for coming on tonight. Dude, thanks for having me on, man. Super stoked. Uh, this, was, this was awesome, dude. Thank you. We'll have to have you back. And uh, until next time, I appreciate you all, and uh, we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you for watching The Disconnected. On the way out, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you've liked the video, and that you've copied the link to be able to share it with someone else that may appreciate this.